Well, hey, welcome to the show before the show. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, your local game guy, and I'm joined by co-host Will. Hello, Will. What's up? Dude, not much. I'm pooped. This 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 is a uh, this week's got me pooped. Oh, uh quick quick announcement. I'm gonna be out of town next week. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I get back Thursday evening if I'm not mistaken, although I might be asked to stay where I am longer. But that may if that's the case, it may impede like a Friday stream. So Sorry about that. But tomorrow, we should be doing a legendary tier list guide for you all, for OTJ. And the set's been kind of extraordinary. I feel like we might have an S or two within the lot of legendaries we've been seeing. I, the last of the secondary legendaries from the commander sets, by the way, have been spoiled. So if you haven't seen them, look them up online. I believe the command zone was doing Olivia's deck. So it's there now. Yeah, well, how are you, though? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Very hyped about a lot of the things that have been spoiled so far. Scryfall is yet to update the commander stuff. It looks like, but man, I really want to build Flint. <laughs> Flint might be um, my the next deck I'm working on. Is Flint not on there yet? No, no, no. Flint's in the Jenny Flint. Is, yeah, Flint no. is available. He's the um. Oh, uh, laughing Jasper, Jasper Flint. Flint. Yeah, Did we talk uh, about him? We talked about him in our recent we, video, We actually. talked about him because he's really cool. I don't think we're doing a deck tech on him because people really didn't like uh, Yes Man because it it's not a good, concise goldfishing deck. So yeah. I feel like people just did not like the deck because it's like, well, you didn't show a win. And it's like, well, yeah, but you grind out a win on like turn six-ish. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So I felt like Jasper Flint is probably not going to be a good deck to build for stream. However, as a commander, he is the best slow Rakdos commander we have ever seen. He hmm. draws a ton of stuff, messes with people's decks, and is just a bunch of really fun BS all rolled into one card. Also, I already know what I'm calling the deck. It's Flint and Steel. Ooh. Wait, okay, oh, I, I like it. <laughs> yeah! Also, his weapons look gnarly as hell. He's definitely one of the cooler characters we've gotten from the set, and that's saying a lot. Um, if you haven't, again, caught up with the Legendaries, just stay tuned for tomorrow. There will be a stream update for it tomorrow morning, if not later tonight, whenever I find the time. But we're going to be covering all the Legendaries to include Flint. I think... I mean, you know, normally we have a C tier for casual list, but... I think it's notable that it's you think it's going to perform well or just behave well in a casual setting so far as Rakdos is concerned. You'd say it's to top of the list so far as I think slow Flint, stacks is concerned. Flint is honestly a B just because you get you burn through other people's decks, get their stuff to try to slow down the game, and then get to the point where you're just shredding win cons off the top by going like mm -hmm. six, seven cards deep on somebody's deck. It's basically, he becomes a Wheel of Fortune every turn just for you, and you don't discard your hand. He eventually just goes crazy, and if there's a rule of law in play, good game. I like that. Uh, so, guys, during the show before the show, when the wizard gods see fit to deliver us with the collector boosters, uh, we like to rip these open on camera for you guys. Uh, it's a fun way to show off the product. Use the link in the description. There is a link for you. Hey, buy your fallout through the link in the description. You don't really have to. You probably moved on already. Although I gotta say, the Pip Boy 3000, having looked at it again a second time, I actually really do want a copy. It's it's quite good. Um, as, I, as we just saw, I, like the the lost Jeet. Sorry, what were you gonna say? I think that that's gonna be in the uh, the Naya deck, the Naya mm. Commander deck. So I think you're gonna mm. get a copy of it. Oh really? Oh, yeah. oh, how? Okay, cool. Well, I mean, I still want to foil one if I can. Uh, sure. Andrew says, I'm sorry, but the cowboy theme just doesn't do it for me. Wow. Sorry, man. I, I grew up watching a lot of cowboy westerns, a lot of Clint Eastwood. Um, it does do it for me. To be fair, I mean, I I'm not. Your, your input was you thought you weren't going to like this set, and now you really like this set. Yeah, you know what? It's funny. It was like I think in theory it just didn't. Uh, it just did not sound appealing to me. But 
after looking at all of the art in the flavor, and I don't mean just within the text, but like within the added effects, uh, it, it sort of just played on my heartstrings a little bit, you know, tickled the fiddle of my heart. I will yeah, they really got me going. The one thing that I am this is you, very Will, by iffy the way. on is not a card thing, but it's a story thing, and it's the whole loot story. Uh, this is your pack, by the way. The loot oh. story? What are you talking about, loot story? So, uh, I don't know if you saw the the teamer legendary that got spoiled, loot, uh, loot the key to everything. Oh, I uh, did. I don't... He looks like he's from a different game. Yeah, that's nice kind of it's because loot is not exactly from this plane, and he is a roadmap to the multiverse. Mm. And uh, Jace and what's her name? Uh, Veroska. Jason Veroska uh, got onto Thunder Junction. <laughs> hey, look, I got another one. <laughs> another Hank. Um, yeah, another one. Um, but Jason Veroska opened this one vault on Thunder Junction that contained loot, and loot is this creature that supposedly. Uh, oh, brother, you got a foil. Oh, oh, you beat me. God damn. You got the foil one. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. I'm sorry. Okay, so Jace, Vraska, little guy who looks like he's like a Digimon yeah. knockoff. Uh, also, I did not know this. Jace is still uh, affected with Phryrasis, but he's just like, yeah, I, I'm the mind guy. You think you can corrupt my mind? I'm just going to keep fighting it back. That's... That's kind of sick. Yeah, like, oh. Jace is actually getting solid character development since after Phyrexia all will be one, and I'm hyped. Um, but Loot is the new mascot for Magic the Gathering, supposedly, and he's going to kind of be threaded in with everything. Because mm. as a sort of like, walkers, quote sort unquote, of like aren't thing anymore. Sort of like Kellen is? <laughs> is but, it Kellen and Loot are going to be in every set now? <laughs> well, the Kellen, I think Kellen finally ended his story because in this set he met up with Oko, and Oko's mm. like, oh, boy! And then I think that's probably where Kellen's uh, run's gonna end for a little bit. But, um... <laughs> There's a magic story? Andrew, there is. Sorry. But continue with what what's going on with Loot. You said he's he's meant to take on the role of the plane hopper that yeah, he's planes the, He's walkers? like, he's a... a this kid that's supposed to supposedly like a multiverse being that knows like every portal and everything to each of the multiverses and is basically a walking talking map to the multiverse okay. so he is the new quote unquote planar bridge to some extent i'm oversimplifying the crap out of it but basically he's gonna be a, a little bit of everywhere and he's gonna be like "Ooh, you got nick and I did. Be, I like, just. Uh, I just want to show you guys. So you, I know we're talking about a character from. I, I don't expect you all to have seen this character, but this is who Will's been referring to. This little nugget. Yeah. This weird limited edition McDonald's whack Donald's chicken nugget over here. If you look at the alternate art. You can kind of see him uh, leaving the vault so that you can get the. Uh, oh, with Roska and yeah. Jace. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, that's so. It's so weird uh, so this bothers me more <clears throat> so i'm i'm curious though victoria andrew you know that you say you're right there with them uh what is it about the cowboy theme that uh is putting you off um i don't you know i feel like they've magic sort of jumped in on everything and is doing it even more so now with the universe is beyond obviously so nothing feels out of left field for me uh but I actually quite enjoy it. I like that they dipped her, their toes into it. What does bother me is this little this, this dude. When I saw the art for just the other one, I'm like, what? what is this magic? What, what am I looking at? Something about his character design just was so damned outlandish. So it makes a little bit more sense now that you break it down for me. But even looking at this, it's like, why is Jay so happy to be cuddling up with this little dude's palm? There, <laughs> What's, there's a cute? story behind that, and it's okay. like a whole a whole thing. So supposedly, when Jace was working with Tezzeret for Bolas, uh, they went to Thunder Junction to check it out at some point, and they found mm -hmm. this vault, and they found out that there's a living creature inside this vault, and something, something immeasurable power level stuff. So, more or less, Loot is a star child, if you've ever seen that kind of trope in any kind of story. Like, freaking Kirby. Loot is Kirby. 
Okay. The, the simple, uh, naive, lovable creature with godly powers, supposedly. So Luke's mind contains a map of the multiverse. All right. Thank you, Cameron. Yeah, I, I assume this came out, and were you watching the story trailers for this set, Will? Uh, I've been keeping an eye on, like, a couple of the things. I haven't seen the trailers for it. I'll have to check them out before the stream tomorrow. I will say, you know, Wizards was a, a fair bit better with those storied videos. I know a lot of people have been complaining about how those have released after the fact. Normally during spoiler season, I think that's when a majority of us are most interested in catching up with the set and perhaps its lore. So when the lore aired separate of the spoilers and after pre-releases, most people were already off it. So I, I did notice that they've been releasing it in advance, which is a good move. Um, I haven't watched them because I remember the production quality was a little lackluster for some of them. Uh, hopefully they fix all of that. But that, that'll be great for everyone if you want to catch up. So let me know how you guys are getting your information on these sets, um, particularly uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction, because I think they've been doing a good job rolling this one out. Um, let me see. But no, I haven't caught on with whatever is going on with the CDH Reddit, Mateus. I, I don't know if you have yet either, Will. I have not. <clears throat> uh, I got your watchful root stag. Rad yeah. stag. Oh, hey. Wait, did I get the same one? I got... I got... Whoa, wait. <laughs> Will. I got oh, one, nice. too. Oh, <laughs> nice. Is, is it... I can't remember. And foil. Oh, you yes. both of us are foiled. Nice. Oh, <laughs> shut up, dude. I was I was about to beg, borrow, or steal from Will <laughs> because I really wanted this for uh, Oswald. Holy crap, dude! Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't believe I pulled this. I, you know what's funny though? I totally forgot that you happened to pull one uh, last week when we were looking at these. Uh, the last one is just the token. Um, but no, that's freaking awesome. Thank goodness. All right, sorry you're so close to my face. Unless you like it, then you're welcome. Uh, but we're going to open it like one more pack each, and then we'll jump into Get Rob Ravenous Ride. Anything on my teeth? Okay. Um, yeah, so let us know what's going on with CDH Reddit. I... Is that the competitive EDH Discord? Like, I think they changed it from the Reddit symbol and all that uh, new thing recently. And oh, are you are you looking this up or something? Yeah, I've, I've been part of the uh, the Discord, but I haven't really been active on it. Yeah, so I'm not really good with Discord. You guys might notice I will respond to you if you talk to me on my Discord. But if I'm on any other channel, I'm sorry. Like, hey, hey oh, that's you. This is yours, though. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Back, at, back to beg borrowing or stealing. But uh, yeah, so if I don't respond to you on other Discords, I'm sorry. Uh, there is a link to our Discord, though, in the description here. If you did want to talk about decks, uh, ask me specifics. I'm not going to be good at, like, supervising a whole construction. But if there's something you want to ask about in particular, there's an area called the Cauldron. Oh, shit. It's my favorite art from the set. Yeah. Nice nice nab, sir. Oh, shit. Oh, oh we're going to skip one. We're going to skip one. <laughs> Uh, fraying sanity. Okay, yeah. probably probably fair to skip that one. Uh, struggle for project purity. Prairie stream. Prairie stream. Ooh. Pre war for boy. Well, you got extended slash surge foil. Yeah. Hot damn. Oh, the foiling in the mirror is extra too. Like they make it stand out. Oh, that's so that good. Combo, my friend combo yeah. I mean, <laughs> that and hermit druid is just a really sick combo ah uh, dude again with the vandal blast you're getting all of the uh pip boy themed cards last <laughs> one is holy shit will guess what your last one is not only did yeah. you get nuka cola vending yeah. machine not only did you get the pip boy version of nuka cola vending machine you literally got a foil nuka cola Betting machine. I have no idea how much this is worth. I have a gut feeling it's worth something. Uh, uh, so, the so most, in <laughs> the most expensive art is the Pit Boy Nuka Cola. And obviously, it is, with Obvious. foiling is going for seventy four bucks. Lord, well, damn. All right, well, 
<laughs> nice. You you won. You won the pack wars. If Indeed. there was a if there was a battle, but that just goes to show. If, in case you guys were wondering, I did not shuffle these up because I wanted to get an idea of where we were getting our best hits. Now I've normally taken the left side, and Will's taken the right side. Uh, this was the right side again for Will, so that's interesting to see. But holy crap! I don't. I'm not really <laughs> too upset <laughs> because I did get holy crap though. Wait, you got pre-war formal wear, you got the Pip Boy, and you got the Nuka Cola, Cola vending machine in the same. The same pack. Also, Pip Boy Vandal Blast, non-foil, but still Pip Boy. Vandal Wait, but Blast. you have a foil. <laughs> Vandal I know. Blast. I know. <laughs> I know, but, but you're right all though. In the same pack. I'm not gonna lie though. I think that the, those it, it, that over the uh, Pip Boy 3000 treatment like frame. Like, that is cooler, because it's like, I don't know, the, the art from Fallout, especially of the Pip-Boy, those illustrations are just, are just the best. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, the acquisition by PlayDH has backfired. There's a lot of context and drama to it, but PlayDH basically wants compensation if they were to give the server back. <clears throat> That's cool. Okay. That's, uh, that is weird. Uh, I'll have to look into that more. Damn, dude. That was the hit. It's funny that it's an uncommon, by the way. I know, it's like one of the more expensive cards from this set, and it's a freaking uncommon. Uh, I gotta try on cats. Mr. Gutsy. Uh, we've got one more pack each, but we'll open it at the end of this show. So don't, don't worry, guys. We're gonna do it. Oil Nuka Cola. I don't think so either. That was like a holy crap moment. We haven't hit like a really Ooh, good. Zone. That is really sick. That card needed a reprint for so long. I'm happy that got reprinted. Speaking of reprints, thank God for mental misstep. Not mental misstep. I'm sorry. Mind, Mind break, break trap. trap. Oh, hey, these bubbles are like sought after, I thought. I'm not using any. Specimen 73, Hornet Queen reprint, Mysterious Stranger. Uh, this one's foily, oily, foily, boily, and food token. Well, I'll, uh, I'll give you my food token, okay? <laughs> I shouldn't be needing it. Okay. The pit boy art is definitely iconic from Fallout Property. Yeah, I mean, I remember playing the original turn-based Fallouts. Those are still my favorite. I, I haven't really played one of the modern 3D ones in a minute, but on that note, well, hey, welcome to our Thursday show where we are going to be working on Get Raw the Ravenous Ride. I'm your host, Patrick Marlatt, and your local game guy, and I'm joined by co-host Will. Hey, Will. What's up? It's about time we get to this. Enough about loot. Enough about cola. <laughs> Speaking of loot, uh, we're here to talk about, again, not this ugly little bastard, this beautiful big horror. So, Get Raw. Ravenous Ride. For three generic in Golgari, legendary creature, frog horror, mount, 6-5 body, trample, and haste. Whatever you're doing, you're going to be doing it now. Unless you enter tapped, and I'm sorry that your friends like playing stacks. Whenever the Gitrog Ravenous Ride deals combat damage to a player, which you will, you may sacrifice a creature that's saddled at this turn. Saddle cost of one, mind you. So, anything. Pretty much anything, except for like a shield sphere or... I don't know, don't play anything that doesn't have one attack power. You may sacrifice that creature. If you do, draw cards uh, equal to X, then put up to X land cards from your hand onto the battlefield top door. X is a sacrifice creature's power. Your mana dork, minimally, is going to let you net a draw and ramp, right? So it replaces itself. Mind you, the land you put into play is tapped, so it's, it's slow. So you're not going to be able to get any value out of that then, but you're cheating lands into play. Uh, this only will trigger for as many combats as you have, but that's okay. It's not like this is the color of multiple combats, but this is the color of really big strength. And it's not based off of the creature's base power, it is just the general power. So anything that's going to buff a creature, I don't know if it's really advisable, but if that's how we're trying to pull through our list, then maybe you do use a handful of the one to two cost buff effects. Uh, and there's a couple, there's like one free one, like... Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's like a, or something like that. Something bigger. It's a Savala card. You'll use it here, maybe. <laughs> but the things you really want to incorporate are just fat creatures, big old fatty fat creatures that are cheap. 
So uh, the same is true for Savala in that sense as it is with Gitrog. You're probably going to use a lot of those bodies to draw a shit ton of cards and put a shit ton of lands from your hand onto the battlefield. If you have anything that cares about landfall too, that'll be an effect that we might want to manipulate. I don't know if it's more for value or as a potential finisher. I don't think we're going to get any game closers off of landfall in this list, but maybe that's something we can design. Uh, but Will, what are your thoughts on the Gitrog and how do you want to take this ride? think doing creatures that can get high power for really stupidly easy cost is probably the best option. There's a lot of good things that were in Silvala. There's a lot of good things that we can run that weren't in Silvala. And there's a lot of good things that get bigger based off the number of lands you control in some way, shape, or form, which is really good with Gitrog, because after your first activation off a big thing, that creature's going to be massive. Mm hmm Hmm. We'll All right, say. so... Oh, the best option that we might have to start is a uh, wall of blood. <laughs> is there anything else that operates like wall of blood? This is the uh, pay life gain power card. I've been looking through to see if there is anything that's just a, this thing becomes an infinity infinity, but you can't use it. Uh, but I don't know if there's another really good, big, dumb creature like that. How hard do you go into wall of blood if you're doing this? Like, is it, is it your Necropotence? Because you need to do combat damage, so there's so many instances where they'll be able to interact, provided they want to. Uh, make sure you have something that gives the Gitrog a hexproof or something that'll save you from the removal. But well, I will say, it really doesn't matter, because you pay one into Wall of Blood and Saddle, then you move to combat, and after you connect, you pay the other 38, and then this when becomes triggers on the stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's safe. It's safe. <clears throat> It's safe for the most part, I think, with Wall of Blood. It is too generic in a black, but I think you'll probably try to land this beforehand. Uh, it's important to note that Saddle, it's... Uh, it, there are some other functional keywords in the game that work like it, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's almost like crew. It doesn't matter if the creature is summoning sick. You'll still be able to Saddle the Gitrog, provided it's there. So, uh, and obviously not tapped. Uh, and yes, the Manavolt reprint's amazing. Will... If, if you feeling lucky? You should just buy one of the Fallout secret layers to see if you pull one. No, nah, I'm fine. So we have the Gitrog Ravenous Ride off to the side. There's a commander here. Uh, this is a copy and paste land base. Don't mind it. It will change, but do we want to go for a land base that would incorporate a Tainted Pact? Like, do we care for that in this build, do you imagine? Uh, I don't think we need Tainted Pact. Because uh, it's not a bad tutor, but we've we've been slowly getting more and more good tutors, and we got some good tutors in green as well, so we should probably be fine on tutors. I am going to put a Crystal Vein in City of Traders. Um, our commander is 5 uh, CMC, 3 generic, so I could see us using those. Um, any other lands you guys can think of, uh, new and or old, that aren't showing here, let us know. But I think this is pretty much this is pretty much good. The balance of snow covered forest and snow covered swamp that's going to change obviously. Uh, these being snow covered, there's probably a particular reason for your old stick fingers. But uh, we don't I can't remember. If there's actually a reason or not. <laughs> not quite necessary here. A uh, soul drinker is much worse. Um, it's one mana, pay three. It's a wait, wait. worse blood wall, but it is another potential blood wall. I don't think I'd run it, though. Oh, oh, four mana, pay three for plus one, plus one. Uh, I mean, yeah, if we're all good with blood wall, or wall of blood, I'm sorry, wall of blood, then yeah, I'll put that in well, the deck. You know, you know, it's a really stupid card that is ridiculously good if we're discarding the hand size a lot by accident. Mm. Souls of the Lost. It's a one in a black for a star and star plus one that has an additional cost of discard a card from your hand or sack a permanent and its stats are equal to the number of permanent cards in your graveyard plus one for toughness <clears throat> hmm 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 well we're not going to sacrifice permanent likely unless we care about hitting that permanent count well, we're right, probably going to be playing this and then discarding to hand size afterwards anyway, so we're right. dumping that random, crappy, like, creature we don't care about. Well, look, any excuse to use Nils Home Art, but 
I like it. I like it. Guys, what we're doing right now, in case you're wondering, uh, I know the audience that's been with us is obviously, you know, tuned in, but we're just looking for low cost, high power creatures. And I think we'll get there here with Souls of the Lost. And this could mean buff spells. I, I do think we will want to incorporate dorks. Uh, so why don't we incorporate our dorks now? Uh, let's do Arbor Elf, Land of War Elves. The fine, the fine horn elves. The mystic, elvish mystic, I should say. Yep. There's one card I always recommend. What's that new people. one? Oh, sorry. Uh, I, oh, I'm um, trying to. Delighted halfling. Yeah, delighted halfling. Uh, is there anything uh, I'm missing that's good? I know I'm missing one of the green producing ones. It's not fine. It's not Land of War. It's not Elvish Mystic. Fin is there another one? No, I got that. Oh, oh I guess have... I got it. Uh, yeah. So, Birds of Paradise. Land of War Elves, Land of War Elves. Um, well, um, there's a Death Rite uh, Shaman, uh, Birds of Deep Paradise, Shadow. and uh, Elves of Deep Shadow. Yeah, I just don't have, at this point, I don't have in here... I did Bop, Elves of Deep Shadow. What was the other one you mentioned? The Death Rite Shaman? Yeah, yeah we like Death Rite Shaman. We still like Death Rite Shaman. Especially in this list. <laughs> okay. Uh, what were you going to say, Will? Uh, I Something you recommend? One creature that I recommend as a tech card to people who play Silvala. <clears throat> I can't find it. It's a worm. Non-costed caterpillar. Hey, there we go. It's a coiling woodworm. And the reason why this is good is it's two oh. in the green for a star one, and star is equal to the number of number of forests on the battlefield. Not you control, on the battlefield. And remember, in this deck, we are running Yavamaya, so you can count everybody's lands. Ooh, if Yavamaya... Well, damn. Let's fool with that. I like that. Yeah, it's a fun card. Let's do this. Coiling Woodworm. I'm going to look up... Power equal. See if we can't find anything that really gets the juices flowing for our Gitrog monster. Um, and the the big creatures, because I've been looking up uh, creatures with high power that cost four or less as well. One mm -hmm. that is maybe the best option is a Demogoth Titan. So it's a, a Golgari mana four times. For a 11-10 that says when it attacks or blocks, you sacrifice a creature. So it's a D-A-E-M, Ogoth. Wait, I'm just trying to find it here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. okay, 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 okay. Let's spell it again. Uh, D-A-E-M-O-G-O-T-H. Sorry, I was reading uh, Victoria's comment one last time. Uh, D A E M O G uh, G O T H. It's a demigoth. It's like it's demon, lot, but demi demon. Attacks, there's block, sacrifice a creature. Uh, demigoth, woe eater. There's two. That's cool. Oh, what the frick is um, the woe eater? I know. Whenever you, uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. When you sacrifice a creature, oh. each opponent discards a card, you draw a card. Yeah, that's uh, another potential option, but. I like the Titan because we just choose to never attack or block with it and immediately sack it to draw 11 for 4 mana. And potentially play 11 lands. Oh, what's that one Gigantosaurus? Is uh, that yeah, it? that's the 5 Is green. it 5, though? Yeah, it's 5. It's a green, 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 green for a 10-10. Uh, <laughs> uh, rotting rotting Regisaur is probably good, though. That's 2 and a black for a 7-6 that says discard a card on your upkeep. Yeah, I remember the boy. We're gonna try not to let there be an upkeep. Rotting Regisaur exactly. and uh, like Demogoth. Phyrexian Soul Gorger is also pretty good. Uh, it's Demogoth Titan, right? Yeah. Yeah, Titan. I like Demogoth Titan, and I like Rotting Regisaur. It's a Mana Crypt creature. Yeah, we'll, be... we'll get into doing our like our rituals and stuff in a second. I will put just Elvish Spirit Guide because I feel like it's one of those ones I always forget to add. But <clears throat> we'll do rituals and fast men and all that good stuff in a second. I just want to see if there's anything else that's power specific that we want to incorporate. Hey, Trickster. Sorry to hear that, Victoria. Um, 
you feel free to vent on the uh feel free to vent on the discord if you'd like but yeah i uh the game is changing pretty rapidly i gotta say the state of magic is definitely changing for better or worse i think it just depends on yeah, personal your opinions. personal opinion yeah um the last two creatures i'd probably include for uh big big power boys are uh Phyrexian Soul Gorger and Hunted Horror. You, uh, I don't know if I really... want the Phyrexian. Oh, oh, you mean that Soul Gorger? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah not just three mana eight eight. That doesn't really have any text other than that because it's immediately dying. And then a uh, Hunted Horror is a black black for a seven seven Trampler ETB target opponent gets two three three centaurs with protection kind of from black. Um, that is a uh, the one I'm looking at is from a commander pre-com, but it was a uh, Ravnica City of the Guilds or City of uh, Guilds. That's what it was originally from. We got asked if we added Golgari Yarik to the list yet. Uh, is what do you mean by Golgari Yarik? I don't know. Do you really want to give opponents three threes? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's three threes with protection from black, but if you right. give it to the one person who already has creatures, you're probably fine, and you don't care about your life total too much in this deck he, other than Blood Ball. My thing, depending on who you're going up against too, sometimes decks just don't have creature bodies, and there's always going to be that one Timna player that's just going to get in because someone lacks a blocker. So frankly, oh, uh, I don't mind... Yargle. Yeah, frankly, I don't mind giving out bodies to block. Provided they use it for that. If they're dumb enough to swing with both of them, then that's... It's a separate issue. <laughs> but uh, I do not mind giving out bodies. Uh, that's why I like that one land, too. The uh, Exotic Orchard. Uh, equal to the number of rats you control, Will. Uh, I, uh, Tarmogoyf? Tarmogoyf? It's maybe not good enough anymore. We already have better Tarmogoyf. We got the soul thing. Yeah, Yeah, we really do. Caller of the Hunt. Oh, speaking of, I just switched my character class to Ranger in Baldur's Gate 3. Feels great. Nice, nice. Yeah, happy about it. Altar of the Wretched. Altar of the Wretched. Equal to oh, the yeah. total power of exiled cards used to craft it. When Altar of the Wretched enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a non-token creature. If you do draw X cards, then mill X cards where X is that creature's power. Honestly, don't mind with our sub-strategy going on here. I really don't mind having Altar of the Wretched be a sub strategy like if if for an early let's just say for an early Dranith magistrate or if for some reason uh it just get rog is just out of reach it's too costly to play this isn't so bad but on the back end it's really interesting to see well, didn't we work out that this is an infinite outlet to return altar of the wretched from your graveyard to your hand with dargo yeah can do some weird and stupid stuff with dargo <clears throat> Craft with one or more creatures, and then its power and toughness are equal to the power of the exiled cards used to it. That's not so bad. I, I kind of like, I really like this card. I don't know if this is the right list for it, but Altar of the Wretched is one of those things that I just forget exists. There's so many good new cards being added to the mix, do you know what I mean? That I don't always remember who, what's what when it comes to color pairings. But do you like Altar of the Wretched here? I might put it on the side. I think it's okay because it is a good grindy card in a in a bad situation. Uh, Life's Legacy is quote unquote better altar of the wretched. We definitely include that if we're even thinking of altar. Alt a life's legacy? Are you the draw effect? Yeah, the, the with same the pony thing on as it. Uh, altar because it's just um, sacrifice a big power creature, draw equal to power. More or less, I think there's more counters for that spell than there are for this artifact. But yeah, true. Yeah. I agree. It's it's one of those things. It's also as an additional cost you need to sacrifice with Life's Legacy, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. you know, I guess it's a major feel bad if you fail with that, where it's not so bad if you fail with this. Yeah. Because um, you, you may sacrifice a creature. So you could just play it, and then they're like, I'm going to nuke your biggest thing. You let that, you know, the token you've been... Oh, I guess it wouldn't be the token with Orcish Bowmaster. But by the way, tokens off of Orcish Bowmaster... <laughs> That's that's a really big creature, <laughs> and that's a yeah. reoccurring creature. Holy shit, that's probably the best creature we could put in the deck. Just making giant things to sacrifice. Think about how big those tokens get when they're left unchecked. By the way, 
Uh, don't worry, I'm going to peer into the abyss you so that you're going to draw 40 cards, making me a 40 40 orc token. Then I'm going to ping the crap out of you to kill you, start pinging the other guy, then attack with Gitrog to draw 40 cards off that token and play 40 lands into play tapped. Good game. <laughs> uh, Will, Coiling Woodworm and Dung Grover Elder. Dung Grover Elder is technically better, by the way. Oh, uh, which is Dung, uh, Dung Grove Elder? Dung Grove Elder, baby. Uh, forced you control Dungrove Elder. Oh, Elder doesn't care about opponents. That's the reason why the Woodworm is better. Wrong. Don't worry, well, everybody reads that wrong. But how how many forests are actually going to be in play? Will well with Yavamaya, uh, probably about twenty. <laughs> okay, so you're telling me that you want to run crop rotation? Uh, we can. I'm not against mm -hmm. that. No, we will. I'm sorry. I, I still hold firm to my belief that if you're playing green. Crop rotation is a reason to be in green. I will always use that card. It is so good. If you have a land that's remotely valuable, which you will, <laughs> please use it. Um, I don't think I'm swings, running guys. in old stick fingers only because I can't run guys cradle reasonably. <laughs> you can't run guys. What do you mean you can't run it reasonably? Because guys cradle doesn't tap for anything ninety percent of the time <laughs> in my old stick fingers deck, and then when it does tap for something, it taps for two at best. Hmm. Is there, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm still looking to see if there's anything else. Once I get past three, I think I'll be done here. Um, are there any buff spells that you guys in the audience or you will that you'd like to incorporate? Lotus Cobra, fuck yes. That's actually well, a cool we suggestion. Well, mana during combat and then move to main phase, so we immediately lose the mana. Oh, it is during damage. Yeah. There's the, well, the Lotus right. Cobra that makes treasures, though. It's the three mana creature. What? Hold up, let me There's a that. treasure cobra? Stop. Yeah. I don't buy it. Prove it. Prove it. Look at this guy. Look at this guy with his freaking Uh Tireless this... Provisioner. Look how cool look how cool Will thinks he is now. <laughs> look at this. Ever since he got this Nuka Cola, he's acting like the big cheese with his coiling. I'm acting, I'm <laughs> acting like the big cap. <laughs> the the Nuka Cola King. <laughs> it's such a cool looking card, dude, in person. You're gonna be so stoked when you get it. Also that you didn't have to spend like eighty yeah. bucks to have it shipped. Hell yeah. It looks so good. Oh my god. Um any rate. Um Michael uh, but uh, is equal to the number of creatures you control that are fungi and sapperling. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, what is your what is your magical treasure snake? Uh tireless provisioner, landfall either make a food oh. or a treasure token yeah so let's go ahead and look into landfall effects i just want to see if there are any decent landfall effects that we can manipulate and again guys if there's any gitrog ravenous ride cards that you would really like to use uh please let us know also if there's any cards that have landfall in effect but don't state landfall that would be useful please let us know um, I'm just giving a gander, a quick gander, at some of the lower CMC ones. This is a CDH list. I, I forgot to preface that this video with that, but I feel like a majority of you guys know that. Invigorate. Invigorate is the one. Invigorate yeah. is the one where you give someone health. The same guy we give the three threes, we give the health. So we just try to piss everyone off. <laughs> I think that's the goal. You know um, what card we 100% need in this deck? Because it is basically a, a quote-unquote combo card with a uh, Gitrog. Bristly Wait. Bill Spine Sower. Landfall. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Pay three green green. Double the counters on all creatures you control. Oh, he's new. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And good. And really good. Well, mm, under your control, put a plus one on target creature. Okay. So this is kind of cheeky with anything, too, that it manipulates plus one plus one counters. Um, that's kind of cool. If we get, like, five lands into play, we make an elf into a 6-6, six, six, then we use his effect and we make an elf an 11-11, eleven, eleven, and then we sacrifice right, it to get drawn right. to draw 11. Repeat the process, repeat the process, repeat the process. I, I want to state, yeah. I, I hear the audience, uh, I don't know, I'm not reading the comments, but I assume, you know, everyone's probably freaked out by the five costs of that activated. Um, I think when it comes down to it, though, provided you have a guy's cradle and you're in green... And you use a lot of creatures you're probably going to have it and if it's the difference between you getting like a big draw slash land drop right and presumably you've also just dumped like three to four lands right an excess amount of lands so 
you'll get there. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that. Bristly Bill's kind of sick. Yeah. I, mm, also, mm, I want to point okay. out five mana is not a lot in this deck only because <clears throat> we are cheating in a crap ton of lands, theoretically. This is CDH, right? Yeah, exactly. It, it does feel a little slow, Mateus. I don't, I don't blame you on that. Yeah, it's, I it's think, the um, greediest card that we're probably going to include in the deck. I would say that it's nearer the axe than uh, anything else so far, but I need to see what the full list looks like. I, Groundswell is kind of cute <laughs> with Landfall, but uh, not too worried about uh, that. Also, we are probably not going to run the Ozolith because we only have like one or two plus one plus one counter cards. Right, right. And uh, Stormtrooper, the reason you probably thought this is tomorrow night is because we usually do deck decks on Friday. <laughs> yeah, so so just a brief aside. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining us on this deck tech. Again, the magic-related deck techs, as Will was stating, usually happen on Friday. The only reason we postponed it, I reached out to Will, uh, is because the full set spoilers weren't meant to happen until today. And frankly, I didn't know if everything would be up to speed with the people who are participating in this set of spoilers uh, to get all of those legendaries out there. So I wanted to do the legendary tier guide today, uh, but we've postponed it to tomorrow. We just swapped the two. Uh, if you are watching, though, feel free to leave this video with a like. It does go a long way, seriously. So if you're watching, helps. Thank you. Enjoy a drink, uh, sit back, relax, and let's build the shit out of Gitrog, why don't we? The Vines of Vest, would you say? I don't know how hard we lean in on the uh, the power shenanigans. I don't know. I think Vines of Vastwood is a little bit greedy, but theoretically, it's just one mana protect our Gitrog, which isn't right. too bad. <clears throat> uh, you know, Vines of Vastwood's... Wait, it, this is not the one I thought it was. That's actually a pretty good one. I like Vines of Vastwood a lot. It also protects other things. Do we use Retreat to Hagrath? Talk about slow. If we were doing like a Staxi thing, maybe. Uh, you can use Retreat to Kazandu, though. Uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Same I thing, think, more or less, without the doubling. I think our game plan is to try to get Gitrog out on turn two, and then try to do a setup on turn three, and then storm, like, get out of control after that point. How hard are you storming, though? And it's so, so for the audience, you know, we've worked out the general strategy of Gitrog. I mean, it's written on the card. Uh, we, we know what we want to do there. But Golgari only has so many clean finishers, so we don't have exactly an outlet decided yet. And I like to have at least two potential combos. And generally, A plus B, try to keep it as narrow as possible. And also try to keep it within our range of tutors. Uh, and thank God we're in black, so we hit pretty much everything, but a majority of our tutors will be creature-based. So, on that note, Will, what do you think are probably the best lines of play or combos we can incorporate? Uh, first, the obvious one, we have Chain of Smog and, uh, what is it, the Chain of Wither Smog Apprentice. Yeah. Yeah, so this one came from Strixhaven. Uh, it's oldie and it's a goldie now. I'm gonna say it's old. It feels weird to say that, but Strixhaven been, was a while back. Been like three years now, something like that. I'm kind of, I would be excited to revisit Strixhaven, honestly. It was a really cool set. Um, Magecraft was from there, am I right? Yeah. All right, so Magecraft, basically, uh, if, you cast a, uh, if you cast or copy an instant sorcery, Chain of Smog lets us copy it infinitely. Or indefinitely, I should say, because nothing's infinite. Uh, but yeah, we're going to use Wither Bloom Apprentice. I think that's an easy win for us. Um, we just need to make sure that we're able to clear it. Um, what are the protection spells? There's no real silence for us in these colors. A uh, Veil of Summer and uh, Autumn's Veil. <clears throat> so rip one of those, I suppose. Um, it won't stop us from getting like our Wither Bloom Apprentice killed. Right? The Veil of Summer does. It uh, gives you and your stuff protection from blue and black. Oh, yeah. Actually, there's a couple of those things. We'll, we'll have to manipulate a few things. But again, because we're dumping lands, we should be able to have mana successfully enough to like uh, ram through. A Chain of Smog, I like. Um, there's not... <laughs> What's the other clean A plus B in Golgari? Uh, yeah, the rituals are going to come soon. Uh, we could do Devoted Druid Lines, if we wanted. Maybe some Hate, like Root Maze. 
Maybe some hate like Rude Maisie says. Mateus, I, uh, you know, to be frank with you, I don't know how quick this list actually is. So I don't mind a few hate pieces like that. That's why I feel like Will's suggestion of the Bristle Bill, like it, it, this list feels like it could use it successfully. But I do think we need to defend a slower play. We're definitely doing Collector Oof no matter what. I don't know if we have Collector Oof. Or not, but... <clears throat> no, we don't. We don't have Collector Oof. Sorry, we, yeah. we are getting sidetracked a little bit here. But uh, I, I will put the roommates in for now just because it's one of, one of my favorites. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. Uh, was that the 10th edition one? Yeah, we need that foil. Um, Sorry. All right. So combos and play lines you guys would like to incorporate. Uh, so like C City of Solitude, Dosin, if you want to do like a rule of law, we can. Green Grand Abolisher that I can't even remember. Is there a Green Grand Abolisher? Uh, what is it called? The Alsor Shepherd or uh, Destiny Spinner? Name? Destiny Spinner. Uh, Alasaur, I mean, that's only for green things, right? We could do the Allo Shepherd. I'm, I'm not as high on Allo Shepherd, I think, as most. I don't know how you feel about this card, Will, but... It's amazing in mono green. It's okay in anything other than mono green. Not bad six, by any means. Six, uh, Manglehorn. Five. Someone brought up the... Yeah, Mateus brought up Manglehorn. Manglehorn's still a house. Yeah, yeah I do yeah. like Manglehorn. Is there new art for Manglehorn? Not that it needs it. Just curious. Oh, I, I want to check to see. Yeah, Dose of the Falling any... Leaf is up there. Null Rod, I sold my copy of, so we're not going to use Null Rod. And I had two copies That's of this card. to not run a card. I sold my copy, <laughs> so we're not going to run it. Well, if it's I must suffer, then you must suffer. I remember when I bought them for like 20 and I, I bought, I had one and I bought two and then I gave one away and then I sold the others, I think when they were at around $40. So it's cool to see that they're 112 now. Uh, players cannot play uh, any artifact abilities requiring activation costs. So for us, it's not as huge a deal. Uh, it shouldn't be. I mean, we obviously want to... We're, we're using our lands predominantly here, right? So I'm not too concerned. And we might actually have a higher land count in this list just due to the nature of the build, right? Like, I wouldn't mind this list having 30 lands. Um, Skullwinder a lot in green decks. You know what I like? I like Noxious Revival a lot in green decks. Indeed, indeed. I was trying to see awesome. if there was a, a new walking ballista combo with committing a crime. There is not. Oh. Like, commit a crime, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Dude, I can't believe I pulled a copy of this sucker. I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah, this this art is just so sick. I didn't know that uh, this existed. I said this last time, but we pulled it in case you didn't weren't here. We have two foils of these from the same collector booster box, which is pretty awesome. Maybe we'll get two foils of those Pip-Boy uh, Nuka-Cola vending machines. <laughs> That'd be really cool. All right. Um, so did you want to incorporate a... Well, Ballista is really good if you just have infinite mana. Yeah, the other... we're not doing too much infinite mana stuff, though. Uh, if we want to do a weird win con, we can do Wake Root Elemental, because if we have enough lands in play, theoretically, we could just do Guy's Cradle, get enough mana, and then do infinite mana off Wake Root, animate mm. all of our lands, good game. It's it's a compact combo, but oh. it's like a six-mana dead kinda... card. Yeah, it's pretty bad outside of that. Is there not another untapper thing? to use it's the best in my opinion but there's probably other ones are they trampoly the lands are, are they just five uh, fives they're five fives with haste they don't have trample sylvanas's invoker is a pay eight to untap a land and it's a uh, pay eight generic mm. and that makes them eight eight trample haste okay as you can always malcolm agatha soul cauldron ron combo and mono black Hmm. So I'll pull up Agatha Soul Cauldron. I, I'm positive that there's an Agatha Soul Cauldron line here. It's important to note that we will be binning some cards. Like well, the way I um, actually see this functioning, I, I do actually see us going down a hand size, like what Will was suggesting earlier. So we could set up lines of play. You you mentioned reanimate earlier. I put reanimate. I think we should put Dance of the Dead. I think we should we should have at least two to three forms of reanimate, unless it becomes a larger part of the strategy, but the animate dead and dance of the dead are going to go in 
And uh, the the Malcolm Agatha Soul Cauldron and Ballista is the go-to line right now for uh, another Golgari combo. People usually do that when Malcolm's in the command zone, though, but it is, a th- it is three cards in the deck to win the game, which is still pretty compact. Which Malcolm are we talking about? Oh, sorry, uh, not Malcolm. Uh, the bird, the pirate bird. The parrot, what is his name? Yeah, I know what you're talking Fucking about. Rico, now. I don't know. <laughs> One wait, second. wait, wait, wait. Man, I haven't... I haven't dicked around with Golgari in a minute since our Yargul Multani. <laughs> Let me think. There's got to be something better. Do we want to use Yargul Multani, by the way? Francisco. Francisco is the name of the bird. So Francisco, Agatha Soul Cauldron, and then Walking Ballista. But do we entomb reanimate and Yargul Multani? Well? Mateus just got it at the same time that I was saying it. Yeah. Yeah, it's for. And there's friggin. <laughs> Cameron Frey, yeah, everybody's hopping in. <laughs> I cannot I'll believe I forgot those. Francisco, though. Yeah, we're definitely going to Yargo Multani. I'm sorry. He's going to well, ride that. He's going to ride that frog. The reason I'm not the biggest fan of Yargo Multani is six mana. I know, but six mana made. Uh, we're going to We're going to We're going to. We're not going to try to. We're going to either let uh, discard this out of hand or. Try to entomb reanimate. Uh, do we uh, do we Peta or, or add Nas on this list? I don't think so. Not Nas, maybe Peta, but it would be for a combo line more than anything else. Um, yeah, I like the uh, the dragon, the brood lord. Yeah, I think Razaketh might be better for this list just due to the fact that we can do Orcish Bowmaster stuff. But oh, can we sort out a proper Razaketh Bowmaster line? Wait up. Uh, Rosketh, Bowmaster, and then, um, Dark potentially deal. just PETA, like Dark Deal or PETA. It's, um, so, yeah, it's a, oh, a one-card oh. combo, theoretically, where we do play Rosketh, uh, sacrifice anything, find Bowmaster, play Bowmaster, then sacrifice the token, find Dark Deal, play Dark Deal, then we get a bunch of tutors. So, theoretically, yeah, we can do a, a one-plus small B, like one plus enough mana plus uh, a third thing combo. Yeah, Razaketh is probably the best option and we just add Dark Deal in the deck. Um, Dark Deal for you guys that don't know. Uh, it's it's a forced wheel in uh, black. Uh, you discard and then you draw uh, that many cards minus one. So it hurts most for the person uh, dealing, but it's obviously functionally very beneficial here, what with our Orcish Bowmaster. Um, you can loop this with enough effects that let you recur it. Um, this isn't necessarily the color for it. What, what's the best way? I mean, if we just want to kill people with Orcish Bowmaster in a perfect world. Well, um, the, uh, the Dark Deal Rosket thing is to up whatever 10 cards you want to try to win the game. Um, but for a Bowmaster win... It might be best to do probably PETA. Force draw. Yeah. A lot of force draw. Because we do highest health guy. Hey, uh, chunk your life total in half and give me X uh Expo Master triggers. Kill That's you, kill the lowest health player, get a massive uh token draw off of Gitrog to find the rest of your deck. We need a uh, quite a bit of mana, though, mind you guys. Yeah. Um, we might want to do like a defense grid or something to just make sure that we get this through. Yeah. You know, I I'm honestly more a fan of the reanimate piles that are seldom seen. Like I really like the scourge familiar line with ooze. Yeah, um, the uh, asthma ooze. The only reason why asthma ooze is a little bit hard is you need. Buried Alive, Asmodeus, Necrotic Ooze, Scourge Familiar, and then uh, the shuffle package stuff to keep looping through your deck over and over and over again. Uh, um, do we need to loop through our deck over and over again? Hold up. Well, you it's either just, that just... or just have a lot of mana and try to win off a lot of mana. It's not an infinite. If we were to draw our deck, we just need to find a simple solution to win. I would just Praetor's Grasp with Thosses. Uh, we can do that. Issue is right. when we play against people who don't have the right. Yeah, well then, then you go for your Chain of Smog line, right? 
Mm-hmm. Hmm. If you wanted to do that over the whole Roscap thing, we can do that. It, I wouldn't say it's cleaner. I just think it works better in a slow list, especially because we're dumping hand. Like, when we see something like this in our hand, it's okay to dump it. Same as Razakath, but... I don't know. <laughs> Definitely Deathrite Shaman. Deathrite Shaman's in. Sorry, guys. I realized I didn't link this list for you. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We're going to do this. Uh, so guys, if you want to run an ad potentially, what you can do is refresh your page in three, two, one. Uh, changes were saved. If you want to follow along with the list as we have it now, feel free to jump in. Um, but yeah, we're going to keep adding. Obviously, we haven't gone to the rituals. We have not gotten to our fast mana. We have not gotten to our interaction suite. We're, we're missing quite a bit here. We're just trying to like hash out the core strategy, main play lines, and victory conditions, and then touch on all of the other essentials. But I kind of like the Scourge Familiar line a, a little bit more. <clears throat> um, as, Asmodeus. Uh, buried Alive. And... I think that's it, right? Necrotic Ooze? Yeah. Is there so anything as, Necrotic Ooze? Necrotic Ooze Scourge Familiar to draw pretty much everything. And then um, Praetor's Grasp for your Thorkel. Right. I mean, you don't... Do we want to run a loop effect, something to put our graveyard back into our library? Uh, It would either be... We might have an option other than a Shuffle Titan, actually. Um... So, I mean, Shuffle Titans are just very powerful creatures, Will. Yeah. You yeah, <laughs> sacrifice them to draw a whole lot of cards. It's either a Shuffle Titan, Elixir of Immortality, or one of the weird green Shuffle Your Graveyard back into your library things that we could play for, like, a little bit of mana. Let me see if there's... All right, well, we'll see if there's... I'm going to go Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual. Uh, we're going to use Culling the Weak. I don't think we use something like a Sacrifice. I do think we use... Uh, what is the one ritual from Strixhaven? God. Culling... I think it's Culling Ritual, right? Yeah, it's Culling Ritual. Yeah. Use mana vaults, mana crypts. Okay, soul ring. Uh, let's do any two CMC rocks you care about. Will you just want to throw out there, float them my uh, way? I mean, we could do arcane signet, Golgari signet, uh, the talisman of whatever the crap the Golgari color is. Uh, Bellwar stone is probably the lesser one, but we could do that theoretically. I think since we have a ton of dorks, we probably don't need two mana rocks, though. Or at least no. not many. I'll put Arcane Signet for now. Chrome Mox, Mox Diamond, Lotus Petal. Jude Lotus. Uh, so, the first decent shuffle effect that we could potentially run is a Blessed Respite, which is a fog that shuffles target player's graveyard into their library, and since we have Noxious Survival, we should theoretically be able to keep putting that back on top with everything else and doing it over and over and over again. Which one, I'm sorry? Uh, Blessed Respite, but I don't know if it's the best option. Well, Endurance is being suggested. Uh, endurance, when this enters the battlefield, up to one target player puts all the cards from their graveyard onto the bottom of their oh, library. Oh, yeah, in Endurance order. does it. What the crap am I talking about? Endurance is definitely the best option. The just issue because is it's making... a free. Is it free, well, technically? We'll slowly grind through our deck if we cast it for free, but it's also probably not a problem doing that because it's like, oh no, we only made 800,000 mana. How are we going to win the game? <laughs> So, what are these bobbleheads used for, by the way? If anyone in the audience knows, like, why are they evaluated so high, like, cost-wise? As far as I know, gimmicks. Just the gimmick of it? Yeah, um, sorry, w w what were you saying is the hang-up of endurance? So you lose a green card every single time that you loop, but it's like, oh no, I... That means I can only loop 40 times. Uh, putrid Goblin Malira. We're not there yet. 
If you evoke it, can you shuffle it itself? Yeah. You can stack the ETB for the evoke and the <laughs> shuffle back effect. So you can evoke first, sacrificing it, then shuffle back right afterwards. So yeah, endurance is the best option. And even if we cast it for free for the downside, um, we hmm. keep going very easily because it's just permanently discard a green card every single time into exile. There's a bobblehead that can win the game and they care about each other. Got it. Songs of the Damned? Uh, That's mana equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard. I feel like if we get to that point, we don't care about using Songs of the Damned because we already have like 20 lands. Mm. Which one wins you the game? The... Uh, I think it's a buff one. I know there's a one that makes treasures, but it, they come into play tapped. Or a X six-sided dice where X is the number of bobbleheads you control. Create a tapped treasure token for each uh, even oh, result. The game if, if you, you have rolled, ex yeah. if you rolled six exactly seven times. Oh. That's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, Which I forgot I about the, the win the game part of that. It's that was a whole thing for an Orvar script I was going to write, then I realized the treasures came in tapped and I got sad, so I just scrapped the script. <laughs> oh, I like Lake of the Dead. Yeah, Lake of the Dead's good. Lake of the Dead is good. Are we swamp heavy enough, though? That's a good question. Uh, yes, every single land we control is a swamp because Orvork. Maybe. Will's getting ahead of himself here. We, we <laughs> already have Orvork in the deck. We are going to use Demonic Tutor. We're going to use Vampiric Tutor. We're going to use Witch Claw Talisman. We're going to use Diabolic use... Intent. We're going to use Worldly Tutor. Use Worldly Tutor. We could probably even use Summoner's Pact and not care about paying the cost. What do you mean? Oh, just the land? Uh, Well, no, no. Summoner's Pact, find a find creature, and then it's like, yeah, okay, cool. I found an 11-11. Draw cards, play up to 11 lands. Mm -hmm. Pay the four next turn. Um, do we how do we want like the finale of devastations of the world? Uh, that would be another good win con because if we're making yeah. a crap ton of black, that's a way to win. Does it also work with that battle battle for Zendikar? Uh, Ikoria battle of Ikoria is uh or invasion. Sorry, invasion. Invasion. Of it is a battle, but it's an invasion of Ikoria. Yes. Yeah, we haven't gotten any new battles yet, have we? We have not. Uh, we're already running Crop Rotation, Andrew. Thank you, though. Yeah, Crop Rotation's a great card, and I agree with you. We should definitely be running it. I'm sorry, I, I missed some of the main ones. Demonic uh, Tutor, also, Vampiric Tutor, uh, Wishful uh, Talisman, and Guy's Cradle, sense. because uh, um, I did not have it specifically because there's the Stick Finger list. No, that's fair. Right, Stick Finger base. Wishful Talisman, Diabolic Intent. Am I missing a main line Tutor? Imperial Seal. Yeah. Vamp Tutor, Imperial Seal. Kodama of the East Tree plus Scoot Storm. Hmm. I'll beseech the mirror. I don't know, Will. Do you run the One Ring? Uh, we don't need the One Ring. We already we outdraw the One Ring in this deck. Damn. So he says. All right, Will. Do we just leave out interaction? Do we just like ignore instants and sorceries? We can do interaction, but we don't need a a ton. Uh, so the only one I remember is Legolas's quick reflexes. I mean, hey, got, when it works, it works. What else you got for me, Will? <laughs> uh, so we have cut down. We have uh, wait, wait. Neat... Do the do that free black one first. Was it rollicking? Deadly rollick. Deadly rollick. Yeah. Wait, what? It's... What is the one you just named that I've never used? Cut down. Yeah, it's a black. Oh. Bolt. That's right. Creature with power or toughness five or less. Yeah, that's yeah, combined power solid. and toughness five or less. Oh, combined. Oof. Yeah, Abrupt kill that. Decay. Kill that Urza. Ass decay, ass trophy. Ass trophy. Trophy. Um, nature's claim. Natural state. Uh, I'm just gonna use the natural state. I'm sorry. Just to try to reinforce a point. Uh, dismember. Okay. Yeah. Do you like to yeah. snuff out? Snuff out's fine, yeah. Uh, I like, uh, not deflecting SWAT, I like the uh, Imp's Mischief. Still. Oh, that is funnily correct. Yeah, we can use uh, Beseech to find the the Dame Gorgon guy. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Yo, struggling chef, bonus points. I totally forgot. That is a Let play him line. cook. Let, Let him cook. Him He's cook. the chef for a reason. <laughs> I always suggest stuff out. Cameron, but did you suggest it today? <laughs> uh, please feel free to holler with any of your favorite interaction in these colors. Um, I know we haven't added the veils yet, so I'll do the summer. <laughs> And Autumn Vale. Um, isn't there just a better, even in green, isn't there a better heroic intervention? White's been getting a shit ton of them, um, uh, but like green, protection. Yeah, green just got a different one in this new set that's the command. It's not the command, what's it freaking called? The thing where you can choose multiple options by paying an extra. Give me a second. I I, I do want to see it. Um, spree, spree. We got a spree version of heroic intervention. Yeah, we're, we're. By the way, guys, we we're brewing for a card from OTJ, and we will be using cards from OTJ if there's something that we need. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I want to use Green Sun Zenith. Yeah. Um, because we could technically, you know, if push comes to shove, we could like buff a Dryad Arbor. It, again, that's not ideal, but you get what I'm saying. Um, it's also just something that you could sacrifice to buy Diabolic Intent. Um, uh, did you uh, put in Guy's Cradle? I did. Good, good, good. Dance of the Tumbleweeds. Isn't there a Rumbleweed as well? Hey, Joshua. How are you? How are you, good sir? Come to join the festivities? To take a ride on the wild side? Of the horror known as the Gitrog. Uh, Allosaur Shepherd, Archdruid's Charm. Allo Shepherd is in. Uh, Archdruid's Charm, Will, do you want it here? How uh, do you feel? Exile, Flight, and or Tutor. It's an instant. I think that's pretty good. Uh, sure. Trip green sure. makes it, it a it little It gets rid rough, of the One Ring. It does get rid of the One Ring. Uh, so does Haywire Might, is why I put it in the deck. Am I crazy? What's the spree card? Is it Trash the Town? Uh, maybe. Let me... No, oh. I, I think I missed it. You're, you're po There's a new green card that you would it's say... It's the thing with the horse. It's the thing with the horse. Smuggler's Surprise. Yeah. Smuggler's Surprise. So the final version is give all creatures you control with power 4 greater, which in our case is pretty much just get rock monster, hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. You also have two other effects, one that lets you cheat in creatures, which is kind of good and fun, and the other that lets you pseudo-draw. If I paid six for this and I put down... What is the best line? Um, Big creature plus a destiny spinner or, or stacks piece. Because, fun fact, we can flash in collector oof. So do we use this and heroic intervention? Uh, do we use Heroic Intervention? Like, how much of this do we need? I like this more than Heroic Intervention just because <clears> it protects <throat> the only things that we care about, which is our big creatures and Gitrog. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a deck with two big dumb creatures that go win, you know? So, like, a Tooth and Nail doesn't make any sense. Just thinking back to our Tutor Suite. Uh, pick your Poison. You know, I like, your, oh, yeah, I like true. where your head's at. Pick your poison is a pretty sweet card. I'm not gonna lie. Pick your Thank poison you for is the... Like the best green card that's been printed yeah. in like four years. Yeah, we've got. I think there's a pick your poison in here for you, Will. Yeah, yes. Which is yeah. funny because I already bought a pick your poison, but I'm not gonna complain about having a second. Wait, no, didn't oh, you pull one as well? I think I might have pulled one as well. Did, you didn't buy yeah. any Fallout yet, did you? I have not. Okay, you're very fortunate then. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I'm not sure you'll need to. <laughs> Terra Sunder. Terra Sunder, pick your poison. Um, Terra Sunder, I need to look up. Uh, yeah. If there's any fun new cards that, that you guys want to test out, let us know. Uh, but there's been a mess, so I'm Terra sure I'm Sunder missing something. Terra Sunder is a one and a green for an instant exile target artifact or enchantment. If this spell is kicked, exile target uh, non-land permanent instead. So it's a uh, naturalized for, and naturalize the exiles. Um... That's good. That's not so the bad fact that, for well, two, though. That, yeah, it's four mana exile, a non-land permanent. It's like worse abrupt decay and assassin's trophy in most scenarios. Abrupt doesn't hit the one ring, Will. Yeah, but we already have three things that hit the one ring now. We have uh, we have pick your poison, we have the archmage's charm, and we have the haywire might. We're fine. 
Uh, I'm just taking a gander at all of your suggestions, guys. So I see Pillage the Bog. We're going to be turning the One Ring into the Nun Ring, Patrick. So, well, I mean, you need three minimally for each opponent, and then you would like a fourth just in case. Well, that's how it works. Yeah, but... Look at the top X cards of your library where X is twice the number of lands you could... <laughs> <laughs> Should we look at things that care about our lands, by the way? Uh, potentially. Yeah, Pillage of the Bog is fun. That's um, funny, dude. That's really funny. I, I do think you're right in assuming that this is the the right deck for this card. <laughs> yeah, because this is a mini treasure cruise, because it's, uh, instead of looking at the top 7, adding 2, it's look at the top 10, add 1 for 2 mana. Probably good enough. Let's see here. Any thoughts on Protean Hulk? Seeing as we are playing a reanimate. Mm -hmm. Seeing as we're playing a sack outlet in the command zone. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm. What's our line though? <laughs> well, I know. I, I, well, I mean, we have the... the uh, is Samwise specifically Selesnia? Yeah. Yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Give me... Okay, so Victoria, my response depends on what is the best Protean Hulk line. It's, what is the best um, Protean Hulk line in these colors? Golgari, a obviously. Creature, a persist creature, the green lady that says your creatures can't get minus one, minus one counters, a sack outlet, and then um, a blood artist style effect. Or You're right. It's so funny, though. Definitely. That is so funny. We are running... Uh, it sucks that it's it's only your library. I do foresee us drawing a shit ton of cards, right? If all goes well, we should be drawing a lot of cards. So in my mind, I'm thinking... <sighs> odds are likely we're going to muck up our own play line here. But if for some reason, you know, we worldly tutor this, we make sure it's the thing we do. Or we really want to, like, entomb it and reanimate it and do it. But if we do this... It's pretty clean. Um, we do need to ensure that we get through combat, and then we're going to have uh, this beast riding a toad horror. Which is kind of funny to think of, just having two frogs riding into battle. <laughs> you can do oh, Samwise well. with the cat, without the cat? <laughs> uh, well, we can't do Samwise is the issue. Uh, but it's a... Uh... Malira, it's it's Malira, Lesser Masticor, Disciple, Vault, and the Seer, or Carrion Feeder, either or mm -hmm. works. Um, so that's the the usual go, go to Golgari combo. Alex, uh, I'm with you on the Machias Walking Ballista too. I, I hear you there. Uh, that line it, it 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 does require a few more things. Is the only issue. I, I would say Josh's cleans. When you look at Protean Hulk lines, you want to add the least amount of dead draw in your deck, because truth be told, like if for some reason your line isn't available, you could still just grab value, and that's not the end of the world. So, in an ideal situation, though, you're winning the game. So to have as few cards as possible that make up that win, the better. Uh, so something like Malira, Lesser Master Core, Disciple of the Vault. I'm sure there's something else too, though. Um, I feel like we've covered these combos in the past, and there's certainly a more lithe one for the deck. <clears throat> I just want an excuse to use this art, though. I've been thinking about this art for a while uh, since we talked about Ravnica Remastered. I think I pulled a version of this, by the way. It's somewhere behind me. Um, any rate, Will. Victoria, to answer your question, I think that we'll probably... Oh, do we uh, want Chain of Smog and Witherbloom Apprentice? Yes, we, we do, Josh. We, we have it in the list. Um, I like the idea, though, of Pretty and Hulk here, and I think Will's absolutely right. Like, we have the sack out in the command zone. It, it makes sense for the deck. I, I definitely don't disagree. I just, I'm not sure that we are geared towards using it right now. It's one of those things I think you need to consider off the get-go. We're 100% competitive, by the way, at 117 cards. We're doing really well, Will. Yeah, Did you crack any... Oh, sorry? I can't, think, I can't think of another Hulk combo or another Hulk pile that's good in Golgari. Guys, you broke him. You broke Will. How could you do this? What did he do to you? It's not that I'm broken, it's just that I legitimately don't <laughs> know if there's any other good Hulk combos. <laughs> 
Um, right. <laughs> give me a second. Uh, I, I keep thinking that I need to stop what we're doing and then pause RuPaul. But again, different day. You're right. Uh, I'm just going to keep showing this off. It just, this is so fucking cool. This looks so good. Yeah. Uh, Viserys, your disciple of the Vault, Lesser Mask from Elyra and Golgari, I think. Yeah, that might be the one. Because I there's other options fast. with um the sleeper agent or body snatcher, but the issue is that that requires that you have a sack outlet in play. Mm. I guess we can find the Sarasir and then at, in the initial pile and then widen the line a little bit more. Did so either he... of us want Allosaurus Rider in the deck? Allosaurus Rider or Shepherd? Rider. I'm about I... to make it. I'm about to make an easy cut. I don't think we want an Allosaurus Rider. I'm not sure how it made it in there, so don't don't worry about it. Um, I think there is Patrick, a... it's such a big creature. Come on, its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control, and it's zero mana. It might actually be a decent pick, but... Did we want it? Wait, I forget if we actively tried to include that. No, I think we were including Allosaurus Shepard and you accidentally clicked Rider, but it's honestly not a bad card for the list. Yeah, well, that's funny. Um, but yeah, so theoretically we can expand on the combo with, uh, any, any sack outlet. Do y'all remember and when pre-release promos had original art? Kind of missed that. Secret Lair. All right. Free big creature. Yeah, it's actually not that bad. Shepard makes green uncounterable. Not that, not that one though. <laughs> not that Allosaurus rider. Uh, Will, do you want to start with sorceries? Uh, are you saying cutting or adding? or? We're cutting at this point, sir. We've got 116 oh, right. cards in the deck. So, so if there's anything we're missing, cards. we're going to want to incorporate some things, I'm sure. But pick your poison. For some reason, um, Tapped Out thinks that it costs five or more mana. It's so because it's there's another card called Pick Your Poison that was, uh, what is it called? Like the play test card. Are you serious? Yeah. If you uh, type pick your poison in on Scryfall, it might <clears> chill <throat> both. Might. Uh, that was back when you choose from five pre-release packs. Okay. Force of Vigor? I don't know, Mateus. I've been burned by that card by a complete idiot. So, that's the only thing I think of when I think of that card. Sorry. I'm we stop may right be able to get rid of Beseech of the Mirror, but I'll hold off on that until we run out of things to cut what are your thoughts and, and feelings on culling ritual uh and maybe cutting pillage of the bog damn dude it's not bad draw but it's just like if we, we already have draw do we need it's a little draw? slow no it's a little slow we also need to cut a shit ton of lands so let's start there ancient tomb yeah. bayou blast zone can probably go um ba -ba 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 -ba. we only have oh no that's yeah uh yeah we have we can we have five lands that we probably need to cut at minimum. Um, Exotic Orchard can go. I want Forbidden Orchard. Gemstone Caverns can, we can stay. We can cut the basics down. Yeah, I'm, I'm going for the non-basics first. Um, the, the ones that are in here that are potential tech for another list. We didn't copy-paste this. We did copy-paste this. I lied. I'm sorry, I lied. Um, okay, so... That's all I see that I really want to cut. Like the Dead is situational. I'm trying to think of what is the thing we are trying to cast with that. And I, I think the biggest thing is obviously our four drop. Or Beseech. I guess. Um, do you like Lady of the Dead here? I think we can cut it. Uh, I'm sorry, Trickster. Uh, did we crack OTJ yet? No. You will join us for that. I, again, I can't stress how excited I am to open that set. There's so many cool cards. Um, yeah, e even if, like, thematically, like, whether you care for the set or not, I think that they they really did outdid themselves with, like, how good the cards are. It is very, it feels very pushed, the set. Um, you're right. I think we should probably just cut down our, our basics at this point. I'll go down by one. Let's do this. It brings us down to 29 lands if I do that. I think I'm fine with that. Uh, there isn't really a good enough MDFC in these colors. It's Turn Timber Symbiosis and Agatim's Awakening, I believe. 
and I don't necessarily think we want to incorporate those. I was saying we could potentially roll with 30 lands, but I like what's here, nurturing peatland. Is there another type of nurturing peatland, like a draw land, available to us? Uh, not a good one, I don't think. Crack the textured, crack the textured foil mind break, or go home. Yeah, <laughs> or cr or crack it at home. How about that? Does dried arbor do something besides be a bad git rug fodder? Um, it's a couple of things. It's it's a body right for our guy's cradle. It's a sack utility it's like you were saying a bad creature or a good creature potentially if we invigorate it uh dryad arbor is into a, a dork basic dork right you know so there's a couple of reasons you would run dryad arbor like if you're trying to ramp effectively and, and you have a green sun zenith it, it is like what will's saying it's just a good early game play I wouldn't say it's amazing. You don't necessarily need it, but I do like it in the list. And we're a pretty even split on our our act like what we actively need in this deck. And I think we're pretty evenly split with our land base. I think we're kind of cheating towards black. I'm sorry, green a little bit, but that's okay. All right, <clears throat> instance snuff out uh, deadly rollick. Oh, I looked through all of our instance, and the only thing that I think is like a really solid cut is probably smuggler surprise but it is new it is pretty good for our list we could potentially keep it but it's it's probably the cut cutting off we're not going to cut cut down no cut down good. good it's just one black kill thing usually a very good thing usually a stacks piece <laughs> mm-hmm Oh yeah, Green Sun Zenith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We added Green Sun Zenith, I believe. Yeah, we're good there. Enchantments, Root Maze, Animate Dead, Dance of the Dead. You like those? Yeah, those are fine. I might cut one of the animates, but it, they're fine for now. And I, we're probably going to find other things to cut. Yarg Mull is going to go. Yeah. Scourge Fam. Scourge Fam. Do we have any Scourge Fam in the house? Any Scourge Fam? Uh, are you running saw in half in the dragon brood mother? Uh, no hoarding, uh, brood lord, dragon brood mother. Is that a card? We don't. Uh, the, the hoarding brood lord is no. Not it is a card though because it takes way too many cards for that package, and we knew we weren't going to have any slots because we have a lot of uh, tech cards in here. A broodmate dragon art is sick. Sorry, we're 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 not really focusing on the deck here. I'm so sorry. Um, we've got Coiling Woodworm, um, <laughs> Iffy on the Woodworm. We can cut it if you want. It's tricky. I, I don't want necessarily. It's just, I don't know where the cuts are going to come from elsewise. Because if can... I'm going to focus on a creature, if I'm going to focus on a creature, what am I aiming for? What is the best early creature I can get to get the ball rolling? It's probably the Hunted Horror, frankly. Um, it'd be nice if one of these was green. So, well, it's not even true. Like, Finale doesn't care. Um it's just green sun zenith and summoner's pack care, but we have the uh, we have our massive drop for uh, for those two, so we should be fine. Yeah, how much is Allosaurus Shepherd doing here? When we're going for the win, what are we playing? Um, the Witherbloom Apprentice, yes, is is green, but the Chain of Smog is black. Yeah. Um, our wins it's, are yeah, predominantly can black. Cut, we can probably cut Allosaurus Shepherd. Also, I think we can cut uh, Souls of the Lost. Just because... Well, we, it, we never had... To, to, by the way, Allosaurus Rider was Allosaurus Shepherd. Okay, Souls yeah. of the Lost? <laughs> yeah, Souls of the Lost will probably be cut just because it's a star-star stat line that requires us to discard permanence. If we're already discarding permanence, we're probably getting close to winning the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, Allosaurus Rider fills in the exact same slot, but is theoretically free. Oh, we so... cut him, though. Sorry, sorry, bro. Hmm? Oh, we cut Allosaurus Rider? Oh, we cut the Rider! Uh, <laughs> we can cut Wait, Rider we... and... Uh, Lost the the star star creatures aren't horrible, but we need, need to actually play into them. The only quote unquote star star creature that we're going to be running is Blood Wall because that's requirement is that we have life. Tireless Provisioner is pretty legit though. Yeah, that's that's so good. Oh my god, is that the art for Tireless Provisioner? It has multiple arts. 
No, this this one they gave me from Lord of the Rings. My God. Patrick, stop fangirling. You have a wife. <laughs> no, I know, but I'll let her know. I'll let her know how good this art is. Like, look She's at the competition I with a, another card that makes great food. I she, she's definitely some food for that, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, I love uh, love me some peaches, but the uh, the her dress is amazing. Like the lighting effect around her legs is outstanding. That's what's getting my attention. I think yeah, I talked about this when we saw this. Like the lighting in the scene is insane. Yeah, it's the translucent sunset with the clothes. It's it's nice. God, yeah. Whether we want to run this for the Lembus bread or not, I'm, I'm, I think we're gonna use it here. I'll leave that up there. Any rate, if you guys ever wondered what you can get me as a gift, like a playmat of this, let me know. <laughs> let me so, know. I'll give you uh, my address. We're not running Toski because we're not planning on attacking with our elves ever, and we only go wide for the elves. Not running Rosaketh because theoretically we don't need Rosaketh. Like, granted, yeah, we could overdraw him, discard him, and then reanimate him, and then try to win off of that. But we could mm. also just try to draw into Ooh. a combo piece in the tutor. Yo, that's that's one I was thinking about that we did not add. I do want to run Eldritch Evolution. Yeah, Eldritch is good. Yeah, that's that's one of the best ones. Um is there is there a case for natural order? No. We're not There's running no... any massive green creatures that we can't just play. Well No. Okay. I was going to say, like, do, is there an excuse to run it? Like, is there a big, dumb, green thing we would want to play? Uh, the, our biggest, dumbest, greenest thing is the, uh, the Daemon. Yeah. Or, and, sorry, we the Daemon Goth. and we got Beseech Goth. And we got for that. Still, I think. Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, okay. So, we're going to look at artifacts really quick. We've got Altar of the Wretched. I don't know why Will suggested it, but he did. Um... Do you want to keep it? Uh, I th it can probably be cut. Ever since he pulled that Nuka Cola, guys, he's in over his britches with these altars. I mean, you can crater hoof. Like <laughs> we could, I guess. We could, and then let the crater hoof try to ride the frog. <laughs> no, no, no. We crater hoof and make that one one elf that's now twenty twenty ride the frog. Yeah. I Go, go for a ride, my friend. You're strong enough. He'll be good. All right, we do need to cut a few more cards. I think Bristly Bill is probably going to get cut, sir. I thought of a very funny idea that we probably don't want to do, but totally could do. What is the name of this card? Um, It is... I'm going to take out the Arcane segment, by the way. Pretty sure I know exactly what it's called, but I want to double check. You got three more cards. A uh, moss more bridge cards. troll could be a, a kind of funny thing that we can do. It's a tap any number of untapped creatures you control that's power adds up to ten to give this a uh, plus twenty plus twenty. <laughs> and then we can sacrifice to get drug to draw twenty five. We're not doing this, but it's funny. No, I don't think we are doing this. Clack bridge troll though, <clears throat> a little costly. Costly Wasley. Little costly Wasley. Alright. Um we're really we're we're really pushed here. I think it's gonna have to come from instances at this point. We could potentially get rid of one of the other animate effects, and I personally prefer animate dead in this instance because the thing gets plus one plus one. Or sorry, dance yeah. of the dead, because it gets plus one plus one. Uh yeah. yeah, so we'll do that. Uh, which is potentially relevant for us. Uh, Cadaverous Bloom and Squandered Resources. Sorry, that's probably in another build of yours. It probably, I, I know we've talked about these two cards. Cadaverous Bloom. Choose a card in your hand and remove it from the game. Get double black or double green. So uh, It's a little costly for the bloom. But yeah, I gotta say, it looks pretty good. If we get out, good. then theoretically we just play our whole hand. Yeah, it's, no not, it's not horrible, but it's also not great. It's very greedy. Hmm. We need to cut two more cards. 
Make it instance. I'm going to say Archdruid's Charm. Yeah, I think that's cuttable. It's not even due to the the green cost or anything like that. It's just due to the fact that we have enough tutors, we're probably fine without them. Yeah, no, I agree. And we don't have much by way of protection, if I'm being honest. Yeah, which is why I want to keep Imps Mischief, even though it's kind of mediocre right now. I still like it, at least for the rem you know targeted removal. I think we probably get rid of snuff. We might be able to get um, rid of either Arcane Signet or Beseech the Mirror. I already did Arcane Signet. Okay. So Beseech the Mirror. Well, why do you hate Beseech the Mirror so much, Will? Uh, just because we have to sacrifice a creature to use it, which we're not always going to have a creature to sacrifice. All right, so... Wait. All right, guys and gals. Imps can steal a PETA, right? Technically, yes. Yes, they can. Old pros, bloom deck. Okay, guys. I think that we're on to something with what we have. Uh, tapped out informs me that it's still 100% competitive, so you know it's going to be the best thing you're going to see on the internet, at least at this time. But that's just it with these community deck builds. This is just a blueprint. So uh, do not take this as gospel. This is not scripture. Let's just make this as much religious as possible. Uh, no, this is not the list you need to follow. You can take this and build off of it, or if you have your own deck list, let us know in the comments after this video. I'd love to hear how you guys are brewing for this, but frankly, I'm really interested in testing this. What about you, Will? I think we want Legolas's quick reflexes. I think we do. It's in the deck, though, so it's going to stay. All right. Is this a good one? Is this a good one? We got a land, a land, a land, a halfling, a mite, and an eldritch evolution. It's a little slow. Sylvan Safekeeper. Yeah, we do want Sylvan Safekeeper. Thank you. You know why? We got so many damn lands. We're going to have so many damn lands. Target creature control gains Shroud side of turn sounds great. We're not trying to target the Gitrog with anything. Um, so I'm right there with you. I think that's a very good call. As a matter of fact, I would really like to test this with Sylvan Safekeeper first. Because, you know what? I would love to just Summoner's Pack Sylvan Safekeeper. And then go for it, right? We can either get rid of a Dismember or um, Snuff Out for Sylvan Safekeeper. Yeah, let me sideline one of them now. I think that technically... Dismember hits more things. Am I wrong? Yeah, usually. Yeah, so we're going to sideline the snuff out, but we'll go with the Sylvan Safekeeper. I do think that that is definitely a good include, Josh. All right. <clears throat> Another hand. No lands, Chain of Smog, and Witherbloom Apprentice, though. That's good, right? We got the combo right there, Will. I'm going to find a spicy Golgari Hulk line and make it work. Please do, Chef. I've been <laughs> I've been in the think tank this entire time and zoned out almost completely. No, you're good. That's funny. I uh, yeah, Victoria's suggestion of the Hulk really threw me for a loop too. I'm like, that's probably a good idea. I just can't think that hard right now. <laughs> yes. I'm spent. Theoretically, this is the best Hulk commander that we have gotten because you can rush into Gitrog, sacrifice some of your non-useful creatures to draw a couple cards, play a couple ra lands, ramp mm -hmm. out, and then get out Hulk, saddle with Hulk, kill Hulk, and play like one of three different Hulk lines to win the game. I'm not going to lie, I kind of want the Grim in here. Just looking at those starting hands, I'm like, well, how quickly can I get this frog down? And truth be told, not really quickly. And the thing is, is this can't be a mull heavy list. This can't be a mull he heavy list because we need so many cards in our to get the ball rolling on the initial attack. Yep. Right? So you need the setup thing, I think, in advance. Right? You want that good setup creature card in advance. And then you want the Gitrog because you're going to saddle it and then attack it on that same turn, right? So just so far as sequencing is concerned. I don't know what we remove for the Grim Monolith, though. We can remove I hate the to land. Do I'm going to take an all rod out, I'm sorry. Because we've got the Collector Oof. 
if we need to shoot for that, like if we really need to aim for it, I'll just search up the collector of. Sorry. Sorry, I, um, I hate to make it sex. Thinking Francisco Ballista line uh, is the trick with Agatha's. Yeah, uh, Hulk is gas. I don't know why it took us so long to think of it. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, well, we have an Imseal here, Will. Like, this is like, this is not bad. We've got a Summoner's Pack, but it's important to note that Summoner's Pack doesn't really hit any of our value creatures. And I mean, like, power value creatures. You think this is keepable? Uh, well, the Imperial Seal does mean that we can find Jeweled Lotus and try to get Gitrog out turn three. The best thing so, we can do is kill this Elves of Deep Shadow. <laughs> oh. See, what creatures do we have that we can find with this tutor? There's. It's sad that most of those creatures, having played Savala for so long, a lot of the big dumb ones that are easy to cast are, gen you know, they're generic in value, so it's tough. Hmm. Man, I kind of want to put the... No, the worm's still not good because we'd need to get Yavimaya out for this hand. We're, we're, switching, we're switching my guy. This is yeah. a wall of blood hand with one land that's playable. Eldritch Evolution, Necrotic Ooze, Life's Legacy. Life's Legacy, Wall of Blood's kind of sick. Yeah. Honestly, that's good enough for me. That's our Agreed. hand. All right. New pff, Jeweled Lotus. Okay. Uh, hmm. Will. All right. I, so initially, I was just going to do Undergrowth Stadium, Mana Crypt, Wall of Blood. I don't think that's a bad idea still. Because we have a Necrotic Ooze in hand, we could still run this out and make another Wall of Blood. Lake of the Dead is not playable right here. It's important to note that when this comes into play, you need to sacrifice a Swamp. This is not a Swamp. I know it's a duel. It's not a Swamp. Yeah. Um, well, theoretically, we have a turn one Gitrog, turn two Wall of Blood. Yeah, it, it, it feels... It's not... We're just ramming someone for six. You're, you're right. Um... We, yeah, I think we do just need to throw the get wrong now. We need to throw the get wrong now. Because uh, the other way you could do it is play the Jeweled Lotus and then play the Wall of Blood, and you are very much broadcasting that, like, I want to do this next turn. It's just easier to do the damage and leave the Wall of Blood as a surprise, right? All right, so we'll yeah. drop the Undergrowth Stadium, tap here, tap here. That's our generic. This is going to be black. This is green. We'll put this down. And we're good. I'll pass. Okay. Hopefully it lasts. I should say this attacks. Oh, um, I thought you were going to do a get trog turn one and then wall blood turn two. Oh, no, 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 we are. We are. I'm sorry. I don't know if you're, uh, what you're watching oh, is sorry, Yeah, up, I was but... seeing that. I'm looking at the stream and it lined up exactly what you said with tapping stuff. And yeah. Wow. Cool. Uh, mana confluence off the top. This is great. So right now we have Necrotic Ooze in hand, Eldritch Evolution, Life's Legacy, Wall of Blood, and Lake of the Dead. Uh, Life's Legacy is sorcery speed. And we forgot, what's we forgot the, the ramp enchantments. Carpet of Flowers, Wild Growth Utopia. Uh, we do need them, but we're so strained on space. I think that the enchantments probably replace a dork or two, but I feel like the bodies are relevant here. We'll see. We'll see. We're going to make some modifications before we close this one out. I think that this list definitely needs just a little bit more TLC, but this isn't a bad start. Um, we just need to ship this and just cross our fingers. We put Wall of Blood down. You, you. Uh, we haven't lost any life at this point, foreseeably. So we're going to saddle. We're going to... Oh, we well, need to pay one first. Uh, that's absolutely right. Saddle. <clears throat> Attack. Any effects? Bueller? Bueller? Okay, so before we, damage... We keep 10 life to be safe, more likely than not. Right, so we go in... So it's 1 power right now. It's 30. Uh, if this goes through, we draw 30. Okay. So we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... Um, what I'm going to do to help expedite this is just put lands onto the 
battlefield from my hand. Uh, yes, they will be tapped, but I don't foresee us doing anything with them. That's 10. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, if I can, what I really want to do is just play the Collector Oof and pass. I don't see us nope. doing that unless we get an Elvish Spirit Guide. Man, that Tireless Provisioner would have been awesome. <laughs> uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we've got another land here. Alright, wow, that's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff and nothing to do. No fast mana, no mox time, and nothing. We could do Summoner's Pack to get the Elvish Spirit Guide to hand, and then play the Collector Oof now. I I'm just trying to slow the board down. You know, um, yeah. is, that, is that our best stack piece, though? Hold up, hold up. Uh, I did so. I see our Root Maze? Because yeah, I could just play Root Maze. Um, it doesn't look like we saw Root Maze. Yeah, no, I'm I'm fine with this then. Let's do Am I wrong? Like because if we're not winning here, we should just be slowing down the game, I think minimally. Yeah. Uh okay, so let's do that. Summer's pack. Such a weird line of play, but yeah. I'll be spirit guide. And remind you, uh these are all tapped, right? Um, yep. We didn't really hit that many lands, which is, I guess, good for us. But, I mean, this is so much to work with next turn. And I should state that <laughs> when this hits, I think the only thing that Lake of the Dead can get rid of is the Bayou. So we do need to do that. They they all enter at the same time, I believe. Um, oh, how does Lake of the Dead read? Is it, is it a trigger or is it a replacement? It's a trigger, uh... right? I know that it might be re retooled. Hold up. I'll take a look at that. I'll take a gander. If Lake of the Dead would enter the battlefield, sacrifice the swamp instead. It is a replacement effect. Yeah, so it's it's sacked. Lake of the Dead's gone. And then City of Traitors. Oh, is it not? Will it not see Bayou at the same time? Well, it's a... Uh... <sighs> it's a choice, by the way. Like, I don't actively need to do that. Um... Yeah, well, it's, if it would enter the battlefield, you sacrifice the swamp. Uh, maybe it sees Bayou... Right, yeah. Yeah, we'll say that sees Bayou. I'll we'll have to. It doesn't matter. I could just play it next turn because I would rather tap the Bayou and then play this. And I don't think Lake of the Dead comes into play tapped. So, no, no, we we get more out of it if we just wait. That's fine. We'll do the Elvish Spirit Guide and then we'll do Mana Confluence to play a Collector Oof and then we will. Pass you have to sacrifice the that. swamp before this card is put onto the battlefield. So okay, yeah, it would. You'd have to sacrifice the Lake of the Dead. All right, I think that's fair. Um, we're just going to take damage from the Mana Crypt. Are they entering together? They are entering together, yes. In for... Oh, I, I'm sorry. I meant to uh, shuffle first, and then we'll do this. Okay. Prismatic Vista. Um, I don't think we do Prismatic Vista as land per turn. I do think so we just get like a... Traders is fine because we didn't play another land. Right, with City of Traders. Uh, it's in, that, one, that one's a good one to to check but polluted delts i'm just gonna grab a swamp to start with to thin our deck out a little bit um i'll tap for a black i will tap for a black and i'll play lake of the dead oh, and you'd have to discard the hand size moving to the next turn but we oh like yeah 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 the, the combo pieces right uh we're getting rid of the soul ring i know that's weird to say the only thing that's new to our hand is the prismatic vista uh, crop rotation is probably not that useful here, right? Is there a land we need imminently? I don't think so. Getting rid of the dorks. Finale of Devastation, Finding, Witherbloom Apprentice, and Chain of Smog for game. There's so many things to get rid of from my hand, guys. I'm sorry. There's a Wishclaw Talisman, too. We have the win. We have the win. It's right. Not something that we even really need to play through because we know that well, we have enough tutors and chain of smog to find whatever we need to win uh I'm you sorry, discard I just Asmodeus ditched... as well Asmodeus no, no. Is... yeah 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 i i just i realized i discarded uh in tomb um but asmodeus is there and we're holding necroticus so technically we could just hold uh let's see here so we could either just hard cast the necroticus now knowing that we have a like a dead in hand 
and then entomb Scourge Familiar to just have the line of play and then keep any form of protection. Right. Will's right. We have the win. It's just that there's a lot in our hand and I don't want to have to sort through the best line. I do think the best line is technically discarding things. We have so much mana. It doesn't... Yeah, we, we do need to pay for an upkeep, <laughs> but that's theoretically not going to be a problem because right. we already have sufficient mana. It's, I think the four is too generic and too green as well. Is that is that right? Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. So we just the city of traders, and then we'll fetch for a forest and we tap the undergrowth. We, we, we've got it a few different ways. Um, so with that in mind, though, that does change the math a little bit. But yeah, I think we should definitely add the rituals Will was referring to, though. The carpet of flowers. The wild growth. And the, why is the other one eluding me? Utopia. Utopia Thank you. Brawl. Wow, this list is really interesting. I... We did uh, Arcane, or wait, which one was <clears throat> it? It was Arcane Signet. It was, no, it was a Soul Ring. Never mind, fuck that. We keep in Soul Ring. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so I still think we keep in Soul Ring. Is it bad of me to just want to remove the Sax pieces at this point? I kind of feel the same. Okay. Because okay. this deck feels like it just wants to roll really fast. Um, yeah, it's odd. It's like, I didn't think it would want to behave like the previous Gitrog, but it is kind of wanting to do that. I think Collector Roof stays, though. Then? Ooh. Oh, so I... Are probably more relevant than the removal. Oof, I left. Root Maze is still good, I think. Yeah. Because artifacts and lands we don't really care about. Rune Maze is good. Collector Oof is good. Just those two. So there's really not that much stacks to go around anyways. Sylvan Safekeeper is great. Hey, where is great. I think we remove one or two of these dorks. I think we cut Invigorate. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. Is that our only buff spell? Yeah, that's I think our so. Buff, so. We didn't put in the Berserk or whatever it's called. No, no, we did not. Buried alive is necessary. Calling rituals just good hate. Yeah, it's it's a board wipe against most yeah. stacks pieces, and it's a ramp to hopefully get around others. We want life's legacy still. I mean, it was the other option, I guess, in that other starting hand. Yeah, it's it's a good backup line. It, it's still something I like, but. We could potentially cut it as long as we keep our Draneth removal open. We need to cut one more card. Where are uh, you feeling it? Hmm. I was going to say Invasion of Ikoria, but we're kind of fine with that. Uh, if we wanted, we could cut Freighter's Grasp because we just have a Finale of Devastation as a mana outlet. We don't have infinite mana, though. Yeah, but we and have a significant amount, and I think, like, 5, 200, green... 200s is enough. I mean, the, the mana we're generating is black. How are we getting the green? I guess we're just rotating lotus petals. Lotus petal. Yeah. Lotus is that the petal. only way? Yeah, Damn. Uh, yeah, because the Elvish Spirit Guide gets exiled. The... Uh, theoretically, we can also um, do shenanigans with... Uh, Guy's Cradle and Crop Rotation. True, 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 true. Um, we could technically just loop the Cradle. It's not... Um, we might run out of cards to exile before we actually get there, though. But what Will's suggesting is Finale of Devastation, when you hit the 10 mark, you can overpower opponents because you're giving your things haste and excess amount of power. We just need so to have... We're making about 30 mana per loop we're going down one green card into exile per loop. So that's like around like 2000 mana. Not 2000. It's it's around like not 1000 either. It's still like near 1000. It's like 800 mana. Are we playing Field of the Dead? No. Nah, no. Nah. Field of the Dead would definitely be in the casual uh, version, but I don't no, think we're running it. We could 
We totally could, though. I mean, we totally could. I, I get where you're coming from here. It enters tapped anyways, right? We would ditch this off to get rogue, but it is a slow starter if that's like the one land you get. And knowing my luck, probably will be. I I still don't hate Praetor's Grass, if I'm being honest. Even if it just means... I don't know. <laughs> I see your desire, though. Uh, Potential cut. I know you're not going to like it, but Tireless Provisioner... Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. All right, I'm going to play test this one more time, and then I am going to make dinner. All right. You guys can join me. J join me on the vlog as I make dinner. It's not happening. I'm sorry, guys. But I'm going to make some sick, sick meal in a second. Some baked potatoes. Uh, okay, so I see a soul ring. I, there's a lot going on here. Um, you don't really want to start with Dryad Arbor. You normally want to fetch into it or Green Sun into it. I don't even think we drew a card for turn last time. No, we did. I'm sorry. We did. We definitely did. Let's. This is a slower start, but we could keep this. I just want to see what the top of our deck is. Um, and it's probably looking like this, but. Or this, frankly. And the next turn would be the fetch. Let's let's try another hand that's a little bit quicker. I'll, I'll try to do uh, something quickly here. That is a turn two get trog. The hand that we were looking at before with the uh, the dino, because that's turn one. Bayou uh, wild growth. Then that's next turn. Soul ring for up one. Uh, land for up one and cabal ritual for up one. So that's five mana for get trog turn two. And then that's turn three. You play the dino and draw seven. Did we have the Registaur in hand? Yeah, we had the Registaur. So th that was a that previous one was a playable hand that might have been able to win. Oh, well, I want more playable. Well, I want most playable. No, you're right. That would have been good. Uh, we've got two dorks and a dream here. Four lands. We need some form of fast mana. Orcish Bowmaster, Guy's Cradle. Guy's Cradle's not good as your only lands, but we do have Deathrite Shaman off the Urborg here. I don't hate this. So we do this, we do this, we do this. Uh, we're going to pretend that every hand we're keeping is capable of holding seven. You know, like this is the first hand of the game. Uh, if we do this and this and then this, that's one, two, three mana. Uh, we'd probably put the Bowmaster down. This is definitely slower as well. We've got the Cabal Rich, the Dork, the Pick Your Poison. I love Pick Your Poison, man. Yeah, I really do love Pick Your Poison. So good. Yeah. Ooh, what, what, Nibiru, what? Why boo? That I'm cheesing our opening hands. Yeah. Even if, even if we didn't cheese that, uh, that one hand, we would have just put back Scourge Familiar and Necrotic Ooze and been fine. Mm hmm. So it wasn't really cheesing, it was just a. I think we do this in Halfling. So let's just keep this. Uh, we'll do this, this, this. We'll get rid of the. It feels weird because we have Urborg and Lake of the Dead right here. Right? Like that's the thing. That's the thing we can do. Um, I would really much rather. Just get rid of the lake. Sorry. And then have this for next turn. But we've got, if we do this and this, we've got this for black. I want this to be imp seal. And we could either wild growth this or get the halfling out. And I think we just go for the halfling. All right, what do we seal, Will? Probably jeweled lotus. Uh, it's either a ramp for Gitrog, or it's a big creature for Gitrog. Because, if we really look at it, next turn is going to look like... this on this. So, I think it's Diamond Pitching Lake, then we Urborg pay Diamond for Wild Growth, tap Urborg to get the green mana for the Delighted Halfling, and the black mana for Imperial Seal. So if we swap the forest out for um for Urborg, then we get oh, more ramp out on turn one. Technically, yeah. Um, and then we do 
And then for Imperial Seal, I think we get a, a thing to sack to get Drog here, because we we can play get Drog next turn with what we got. You are saying uh, Jeweled Lotus. Well, I mean, I guess uh, Mana Crypt would be better. No, no, no. No, no, no. We, we already have... Do we? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, one, turn. two, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, we do. One, two, three, four, four. yeah. So we do. Um, I go for. Uh, well, it's not like we're gonna be able to play that thing. Yeah, I, I'd go for like maybe the four mana eleven. Really? It's either that or it's um the hunt, the hunty, hunty boy. Yeah, it's either that or like the. Oh wait, no, freaking blood wall. The crap am I saying? Always blood wall. Frick. <laughs> Is it really always blood wall in your yeah, in your world? Yeah, blood wall's our biggest creature, and it's uh super easy to play with generic and its cost. Uh, this list seems mid range. Can it exist in a way that plays stacks elements like collector oof? So we're playing two stacks elements, but right now, uh, is what I would say if content wasn't some of my favorite on YouTube. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, so, so this is a turn two get rog. It is going to try to go off on turn three. Honestly, this feels a lot like old Gitrog, like with what and when it's trying to make its attempts. But that's not a bad thing necessarily. It, it just means that, that it is definitely going mid range. I don't disagree with you. Uh, it, let's go for this. It One, uses two, three, like four, less four, pieces to try to combo off than Gitrog, or at least to get insane value than Gitrog, but it is a lot more flimsy than Gitrog. Mm -hmm. Or OG right, so get rog, I should say. So use the half lane to cast the get rog. We attack with the get rog. We'll hit someone for six, and then we'll pass next now, turn. The question is, do we sack the half lane to draw one? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we can't. Never mind. It's already tapped. Yeah. So we've lost. Uh, did we lose any life this game yet? We're about to. If not, no. The imperial seal. Right, and it's two life loss. Okay. So I'll play the polluted delts. I think we just go for the bayou. Let's go for that bayou. We'll tap here and we'll tap here for the generic and we'll play the wall of blood. Well, here's a, a funny idea. If you want, we can keep the polluted delta in hand, use Gitrog to draw a bunch of cards and then play the, uh, the best land from our hand untapped as land per turn. That's true. Hmm. Yeah, no, that makes more sense. Um, because it's not like we're fanning as if we have much interaction, and we have the mana for natural state regardless. Yeah, this is fine. We'll go one because well blood is an O2. We do need to go one first to saddle. We'll go for the attack. We'll get the damage on board, and then before this, um, before this deals combat damage, I should say. Creature is saddled that if you do draw XRs, XRs are in the battlefield tapped, or X is the sacrifice creature's power. So actually, we could put this, we could literally put this on the stack and may sacrifice it. So we can buff it now. Yeah, there's yeah. there's so many good moments for this to occur. All right, so we went last time uh, down to 10. So we'll do the same thing here. I think we, we draw 20. We lower for this one because we don't have a mana crypt on board. Uh, let's just let's just do even 30 again bring ourselves down to seven life just so it's okay. easier to remember so we'll sacrifice this as part of the saddle and this is turn three with no opposition mind you uh it would have been really nice to have some cheap you know protection spell but that's you know case or uh let me shuffle really quick and we'll do just 10 in a row one two three four five six seven eight nine ten um this will go into play this will go into play this will go into play, and this will go into play so so far. And technically, we would be drawing all of these things at once and making this determination, but I just want to try to expedite it. One, two, three, four, five, we six, seven, eight, all the lands and in play tap, and then keep our favorite one in our hand, and then play it untapped? Uh, well, the Dryad Arbor is definitely going into play. And of these, my favorite one... Would probably be again just the the misty rainforest of Pluto Delta to get the Bayou out of the deck. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's the easiest thing to do. So these are all tapped. We will play this for turn. We'll go for the Bayou. We're not looking to win here, sadly. 
Um, so we need some form of disruption to keep in our hand. Uh, I'm going to just start ditching things. Give me one second. Well, we've got three mana here. What can we do? Uh, we can play that Lotus Petal and we can play a bunch of ramp and then play Calling Ritual and then potentially have enough mana for game. We have Entomb. We've we've got a lot of mana to work with. Let me let me just put this off to the side. So the one thing that's been in play is that Mox Diamond, so that will get hit no matter what from our own calling ritual here. But if we really want to push it, we do have Finale of Devastation. We have Vampiric Tutor. Uh, we just shoot I just think we shoot for the Witherbloom apprentice line then. We can do Witherbloom or we can do uh, Asthma Ooze because we have Necrotic Ooze in hand. We can Entomb Asthma Deus and then we can uh, Finale Scourge Familiar potentially. And then, because if Scourge Familiar is on your field, it's as good as it being in your graveyard. Pretty much. Um, but do we so have. I'm just, we, we have by Chance turn Pog three. No, we don't have Chance Pog in hand. Oh. By turn three, I do think, though, that this is like. We're in a place where we're probably generating enough mana from this. I'm, I'm just looking for all the rest of the fast mana. Uh, it's this, and then the I, I'm just getting my tutor. Yeah, I'm getting my tutors out of the way now. And we have the Dance of the Dead as well. Um, so if we wanted to, if we wanted to use that to any extent. All right. I think that's all of the essential cards from this hand. It's worldly tutor. <laughs> it's not really, but in Praetor's Grass, sure. Let's get those tutors out of the way. Um, four mana wins are good uh, with free mana spell to set up uh, Magecraft loot. Yeah, so I think the cheapest line of play is technically going to be the Witherbloom Apprentice. So why don't we just do this? I'm going to go ahead and tap. Uh, let's see here. What is the easiest way to do this? It's the Lotus Petal for sure, right? Um, do we have anything to like? To so like actually, it's mischief. I, I think our easiest line to win is finale for scourge familiar discard a bunch of cards including necrotic ooze reanimate necrotic ooze and tomb asmodeus and do the thing where is the uh, reanimate oh oh, animate oh, dead. oh. Yeah, yeah 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 off of culling ritual or just just going for it we might just be able to go for it because we just need green green and then five five generic green green and five generic all right, so we'll use the snow-covered forest for the mana vault. We'll tap here, float one to play the grim monolith. I'll tap here for four generic, four generic total. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and use our finale. Where did I put that? Did I put it on the field? No, no, no. Oh, we have an Elvish Spirit Guide in hand, too. I'm sorry. Totally missed that. So we'll do Finale of Devastation. Tap here, and I'll just nix the Lotus Petal at this point. Uh, Scourge Familiar is five, right? I'll just discard it. Uh, I'll exile the Elvish Spirit Guide to get us going. It's better to keep the multicolored mana here, so I will. Scourge Familiar. All right. With Scourge Familiar, we're able to, as Will was suggesting, uh, discard a card, gain a black. We're going to discard the Necrotic Ooze. Uh, we are going to Entomb with the black and Asmodeus. And then discard the worst two cards in our hand for Animate Dead. Right. So at this point, the worst cards would be, and that's really rude to say, but I guess Arbor Elf and uh, the Llanowar Elves. Um, and then we'll animate dead. Where is my animate dead? Dance of the dead. We're going to dance of the dead, the necrotic ooze, back to the field. I also do want to point out, even if somebody stops our whole combo here, we still have like 10 mana next turn and a full grip. Yeah, it doesn't feel bad. And it's like a, you know, like our, our, our choice too. Like we have so many options to keep. Yeah, this is, we're not in a bad position whatsoever. It's pretty... I don't know, that was pretty gross. Um, again, that was off of Wall of Blood again, so it's not like we're always going to have that range of play, but, I mean, when you draw that many cards and with how effective decks can be nowadays, like, you just get there. That was... 
was that the most effective way to do it? Could we have just done Witherbloom Apprentice off finale and like tutored up the? Yeah, we, I do think that this is have, like a clean draw for a uh, for getting the chain of smog in hand. We had Wish Claw though. Ah, uh, true. We could have done Wish Claw. It still would have been like... roughly the same outcome though. It is I prefer keeping exact. our hand. I I do prefer keeping our hand though intact mostly. Yeah, I think but that yeah, was better. We got there. Yeah, and if we really needed to, or we wanted to set people back, like, if there was an untapped mana vault or something, sometimes people just play that stuff out early to get their Tibbet online or whatever. You know, the culling ritual would have been great. I would have just ripped that anyways, because, like, screw my Mox Diamond at this point. Like, look at the lands I have. Uh, but Cauldron, um, but Cauldron Blood, uh, Wall of Blood is a thing, right? You mean Agatha's Soul Cauldron? It totally is a thing. Um... We can make a dork. We can make a dork a wall of blood. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we're kind of going... It, for this list, it's almost like Xur, where wall of blood is our, you know, necropotence. Am I right? Like, this, you kind of just want to go like all in. like Moltani Part 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Do you like this better than Yargo Moltani? I think it's safer, because you have a grindy element, even if, like, stuff hits the fan. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's probably better Yargo Yar Moltani. But it feels very similar. Granted, if you're playing Yargo Multani, you put the Gitrog in your deck now. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. The deck is super fun, though. I, I like it, uh, everything it did. It did everything I wanted it to do. I'm going to crack some packs as we close this one out. If you guys have any thoughts, though, on the list, any changes you'd like to see, any mix ups, I'd be interested in hearing the Protean Hulk piles. Like, if there's uh, a variation with Hulk you'd like to see, for sure, let us know. I think that the deck is fun, though. I don't know if it's doing... I don't know. What is it most comparable to? Would you say it's most comparable to our recent Yargo Multani? And I mean, like, any list, not just any deck featured on the channel. It's very similar. I think Yargo Multani does more Storm. This does more, like, burst draw into try to find a win. It's it's like a weird half and half between Yargo Multani and, like, some kind of Shimmers or Blue Farm or something like that. Because if you don't hit Wall of Blood, you're drawing like seven or eight usually. Yeah, I almost feel like we should take out all of the additional plus power, like big power creatures, and just focus core lines. Like I think Wall of Blood is the core line, and then that way we can run better protection, better interaction. Uh, this is your pack, by the way, Diamond City. Hey, you also get a Champion's Helm. Uh, let's see here. Path of okay. Ancestry, uh, Arcane Signet, okay. a little, little bowl for you, sir. Cast Hand of Vengeance, Prayer Stream, uh, Kate, Cage Brawler, Biomass Mutation. You could also play Food Chain Combo, um, for the Gitrog Monster, Food Chain Combo. Uh, no... Austere command. Granted, it does not win with the commander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're you're absolutely right, though. We could we could he, will he's right. We could run it. West Tech Tyrant, sir. Grave Titan. Don't you remember this one? By the way, Gra Grave Titan's still the shit. He's still a good card. Um, but that's sick. I like the reprint. Not necessarily for commander players, but. And you got Armory Paladin, will. Armor yourself. Yeah, and some radiation. Oh, look, Will, you, you got the big hits already, okay? What are uh, you expecting? Anybody who's also planning on doing the whole Protean Hulk line, just remember, Activated Sleeper is the best freaking thing for Protean Hulk now. Activated Sleeper? It's a 2 and a black for a zero, 0 flash that enters as a copy of a creature that died on your field this turn. Mm. So, Protean Hulk. It's, it's a 3-mana Protean Hulk, so you loop again. And you get to tutor out three mana worth of stuff for your line. Yo, this token is so damn cute. Wasteland Survival Guide. <laughs> Look at this thing. Self-defense secrets. <laughs> um, Alright, we have Eternal Scourge uh, to go infinite mana. And you have Finale. God damn, that Plains is sick, dude. Yeah, that's nice. This is like after they exit the vault, seeing the world for the first time. Kind of love that art. 
Ah, oh, dude, I Yay, got Pip-Boy. You your Pip-Boy. Yay, Pip Brothers. <laughs> I really wanted a copy. The um, missing Jeet, or the new Jeet that just came out, uh, made me think of how much better this is. Yeah, I mean, it's, they're both so good, because the Jitty is like, oh yeah, hold the counter so that you can untap a crap ton of lands at once, or make it so nothing can block, or buff up your stuff slowly, and Pip-Boy yeah. is just like a ton of burst untap mana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't, um... Sorry, what did I just get? Fetid Pools. It's the... Uh, what is it called? I the, uh... What name cycle, uh... Cycle Duel? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I just like the, cool. um... There's so many... I love, um, the amount of lands you get in these collector boosters, by the way. Are you noticing this, Will? I feel like land bases are probably the most important thing for commander players. Um, and I we just gotten so many over the year... Uh, with all the product we get in, which is really nice. Hey, black market. Nice, nice. Could always use this. Fun card. I don't have one, so yeah. Overseer of the Vault uh, Vault 76. Skycloud Expanse. I it's think actually that's one of the original filters, not one of the new filters. Hey, Strong, didn't you get another copy of Strong earlier? I think you or I did, but it, it was an extended surge foil. I just want another, oh, Canyon, slow, slow, slow. Um, this must be janky, but you can run old, get rock and Zurin orb. Hey, Rose, Cutthroat Rider. Hey, noise. I don't think I'm going to build it, but you sounded interested in it, Will, so I might, like, send it your way. I just it's, want another, oh, go on. It's it's cool. Like, it's a, a, a nice thing, and I have a friend who might want to build it as well. I just want another Pip-Boy card. Really, really bad. I don't think that's what this is. Dr. Madison Lee. Who I think was arguably not a bad potential commander. Because the yeah. final effect of just return an artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield is pretty freaking good. Yeah. Is this what you want to do in uh, Jeskai? It is there the aren't best many Jeskai KCI commander, in my opinion. And one of the only real playable energy commanders. Yep. Are you telling me that the freaking war suit isn't playable, Patrick? I'm sorry. But potentially yes. <laughs> uh we yeah. Talk it... about how that technically combos. Yeah, you know, oh yeah, we did, but it's it's I don't know, like something about this. Uh, treatment like the frame, uh, the scan lines on the the art. It just looks so good in person. Uh, you'll see soon, Will. But damn, that's cool. I don't think this is gonna make me play her, but I thought about it for a second there. Uh, the Gitrock set up with food chain confirm con confirm a sack with the dog and put online. What? what are you talking about? Thickening dreams and dark sphere for the win. We could. Uh, Patrick, have you seen the Amazon Warriors promo? Excuse me? What? Oh. What? Is this for a different game? Do you, is this, does this ring a bell for you, Will? Hmm? Does this ring a bell for you, Amazon Warrior? Are you talking about from Sorcery? I, I do not know. Don't worry about it then. Uh, also, uh, Patrick, yeah, the mm. Liberty Prime. If you have infinite mana, you can replay it from the command zone infinitely and then draw your entire deck. It's a playable Jeskai commander. Oh, it does have haste. Yeah. I think I How pulled the Liberty. You? I think I pulled like the extended foil Liberty Prime. I don't think I want to do that, though. <laughs> you don't, but it's funny. It just looks cool. Sorcery. No, I have not seen it, um, but I would want to see it. I couldn't find it when I was looking it up. But guys, I think that's it for the stream. Please let us know in the comments after this video. Uh, do, us, do us all a favor. And let us know what you'd like to see next, legendary-wise, from OTJ specifically. Uh, because we're really excited about... Where... The set's out.
the sets out. You can see the packaging online. You can see it here. So we're going to be opening some OTJ in the future. I am so excited for so many of the damn legendaries. Uh, Satoru is probably the one I want to build the most. But I'd love to hear what legendaries from the set you'd like to brew for. And I think we should be able to tackle them here in the not too distant future. Uh, but do swing by tomorrow for a legendary tier list. We're going to try to provide some insight on the latest legendaries to give us all a better opinion of where they slot in a commander setting. Uh, but obviously they're really best with company. So definitely add your two cents, tune in and enjoy the chat. And, and a happy Friday to everyone on that day. But sadly, uh, it's Thursday now, and I, I work tomorrow. How about you, Will? You are you are you work, doing the work thing? Yeah, I got work. I have work tomorrow. Ugh. It's a, yeah, I, a regular Friday. I've been going through a whole bunch of extra work stuff this week. Tomorrow is a regular Friday, and then I have oh. to deal with DMV on Saturday. So <laughs> Ooh, still, yeah. Still, sorry, man. Uh, I um, hopefully, hopefully, it's the last time I'm gonna have to deal with the DMV for a while, but I don't know. So I'm doing I, because I freelance with this group. It's like it's so weird though. They asked, uh, they asked me for my headshot recently. I'm like, why do you, why do you need a photo of me? They're like, oh, for our masthead. I'm like, but I'm not. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a photo, but like I'm not on your roster technically. Um. But yeah, I, uh, I'm doing this thing where I'm going to be working on Saturday for like, uh, just like four hours. So I'm going to come in to potentially shoot testimonials with people that come into the store. But I think in the future, so you guys know, I'm trying to manipulate my schedule so that I just work four days in a row, 10 hours each. I don't know how that's going to work, but 10 hours each, that way I can just have Saturday to do something and then how we work that though with our live streams is gonna be tricky so stay tuned for that i think we probably don't want to start any later than seven realistically you and i will am i wrong uh probably that'd probably be smart yeah i somehow managed to i was up playing Baldur's gate 3 last night and i somehow managed to go to bed at 2 wake up at 6 30 and get to work by nine because i still need to do stuff in the morning and i feel okay right now like my biological clock has adjusted over these last three it's been a month it's been over a month now actually my biological clock like i wake up at 5 55 every day and i'm like alarm coffee get ready go um sorcery boris vallejo art oh shit okay thank you for du duly noted uh, but guys i'm sorry we're i'm this is the uh, we're, we're wrapping up thank you for tuning in for this one uh the get rock monster it was a fun build uh, it's not even the get rock monster getting our ravenous ride fun build i'd love to see what you guys would like to do next uh if you enjoyed this video please leave it with a like Again, it goes a long way. Again, uh, we will be opening this. We've got a, a little bit of product from them for this set. So I definitely want to just touch on so much of this. Hopefully we get some of those cool... There was like a bunch of shit that released. Like more than just the set. Weren't there like special guests in this set as well? Like I think there's some cool things we can open beyond set pieces. I'm, I'm, I'm just so interested in, in everything Outlaws... Of Thunder Junction. I kind of wish this was the set we were talking on. Uh, yeah, it officially. Is a, it is a very cool set. I cannot wait to start brewing some of the things from it. Just talking the legendaries. I like it. I'm happy with the set. There's a lot of cool stuff in it. Yeah, 6.30 tomorrow though. Right? Why not? 6.30 tomorrow. Yeah, 6.30. But we'll see you then. Yeah. Oh, man. Will, I gotta make dinner. Can you can you just order Uber Eats for us instead? <laughs> Me and my wife. <laughs> Grand Abolisher goes hard. Yo, I can't. Ah, oh, damn, your pulls are so good this time. Yeah, <laughs> your, your pulls are so good. I I'm just happy got that walking ballista. I just need to. You're still here. You're still here, I... audience. Where is it? Oh shit! Did I lose it? <laughs> Where did it go? Um, I'm going to swap that, I think, for my deck pretty shortly. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye-bye.